dollars in Bitcoin. He deposited the currency into his personal accounts. Assistant Attorney General Caldwell said former DEA agent Carl Force crossed the line from enforcing the law to breaking it. Seduced by the perceived anonymity of the virtual currency and the dark web, Force used invented online personas and encrypted messages to fraudulently obtain Bitcoin worth hundreds of thousands of dollars from the government and investigative targets alike. Investigators said Force also admitted to signing a $240,000 contract with 20th Century Fox to assist in a movie about the Silk Road investigation investigation without approval from the DEA. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a freight train carrying flammable and toxic gas derailed in eastern Tennessee, igniting a fire in one car and spreading noxious fumes that forced the evacuation of more than 5,000 people and the hospitalization of at least 25. Homes and businesses were evacuated following the derailment around midnight Wednesday of the CSX train in Blount County, Tennessee, near Maryville. CSX and U.S. regulators are investigating the cause of the derailment. Local officials said the Environmental Protection Agency was monitoring air quality in the area. At least 25 people were admitted to Blunt Memorial Hospital with respiratory issues, while another 27 were held for observation in the emergency room at various times. Firefighters were allowing the blaze to burn itself out on the advice of specialists, as attempts to extinguish it could be hazardous. CSX said at 3.30 p.m. that the tank car continued to burn, making it unsafe to establish any transfer operations. Officials said Maryville residents could be forced from their homes for up to two days, and the Red Cross had set up a shelter in a nearby high school. Residents within a two-mile radius were evacuated initially, according to the Federal Railroad Administration. The zone was reduced to only one and a half miles from the scene of the accident later on Thursday. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after beginning his first date with area woman Pauline Geary, smitten local man Brad Holtman told Onion reporters he couldn't believe that the woman was also a fan of the 1960s British rock band, The Beatles. We were just talking about music and she mentioned that she liked The Beatles, which is crazy because I love The Beatles, actually. Yeah, funny thing is, I was not really even looking forward to the date. Uh, I figured we get a drink or whatever, but it's turning out a lot cooler than I thought it was going to. I mean, she's just such a huge fan. She knows all the Beatles names. She even owns some of their albums. I've been a Beatles fan since like sixth or seventh grade, so I don't want to get too excited and jump into something. So I think I'm going to ask her if she's ever seen The Godfather, which is probably my top five movies of all time. This is the Onion News Network. can join us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 on this Independence Eve edition of Free Talk Live. Although, Daryl W. Perry joining me, Ian, here in the studio. You said something about, on, on the internet, uh, I think it was Facebook yesterday, that it was actually July 2nd was yes. Independence Day. Yes. This so- is news to me. I, I'm surprised that it's news to you. Unless you've told me before and I've forgotten, which could happen. Possibly. Uh, the Continental Congress voted on July 2nd, 1776, to separate from the British colonies. The Declaration of Independence, which was a listing of all the reasons, was ratified and the first people signed it on July 4th. So, so wait, they passed the breakaway, but then they passed a list of reasons later? Right. Okay. 
Yeah, so July 2nd is technically Independence Day. July 4th would be Declaration of Independence Day. So it was July 4th on which, uh, that was the date on which the declaration was signed, is what you're saying. Uh, It was only signed by like three or four people on that day, and Mm -hmm. everybody else signed in August. Oh, really? Okay. But it was on July 4th that the Continental Congress ratified that document. Got it. So they just said, we're separated See you later, King. On July 2nd, on July 4th, they said, and here's all the reasons that we don't like you. Okay. So uh, what you're saying is that the celebration should actually begin on the 2nd and should go over a period of two days, or should it only just be on the 2nd? I'm not saying there should necessarily be a celebration, but if you're going to celebrate anything, do it on the right day. Okay. All right. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-453. I actually just got back from doing some Independence Eve outreach here in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, they Every year on the 3rd, they have a baseball game in the evening, and a lot of people go and attend. I think a lot of free tickets are given out. And they, have a and they fireworks. shoot fireworks. Yeah, later on in the after the game's over, I think, this when they uh, have the fireworks show and it's nice and good and dark outside. Uh, so, yeah, it's a big deal here in Little Keene, New Hampshire. And so I would say a few thousand folks probably come out to that game. Uh, there's a fairly heavy... Probably about two or three. Yeah, there's a fairly heavy flow of people that come in there. So we were handing out flyers, uh, myself and a, actually somebody who's visiting in town. Uh, we went out and uh, did some flyering outside of the game for the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, which is uh, an organization that is sort of dedicated to communicating the ideas of secession. And they don't actually use the word secession because it's kind of a dirty word uh, to some people. I don't mind using it personally, but I like how their flyer works. They've got a a nice flyer we've been handing out here for a few years that essentially pitches the idea of New Hampshire being an independent place, that New Hampshire could declare independence from the United States. And it kind of goes over some of the reasons why that would be a really good thing. Uh, Yes. Tries in, in a very short order to address objections like, well, what about the military or what about, you know, this or that? And then they, you know, sort of they sort of tease that they can answer those objections on the website, which I believe is nhindependence.org. So it's great to, and I know that we're not the only ones uh, in Keene that are doing it. There's also folks in uh, in Manchester who are going to be doing some Independence Day outreach with probably the same flyer uh, tomorrow. So this is a great time for people to get out there, whether you're in New Hampshire or anywhere around uh, the world. Secession is a good idea wherever you are. So. You know, get in touch with your secessionist groups there and wherever it is that you live. If you don't have one, well, maybe you should consider a move to New Hampshire if you love the ideas of freedom. Or you can always start your own organization. But there are precious few states that actually have secessionist movements of any kind of uh, liveliness. You know, like right. there might be some old organization that's uh, been shut down for a long time or hardly does anything. But here in New Hampshire, we've got, of course, the Free State Project. That has brought you and I here, Daryl. And- right, and the Free State Project is not necessarily a secessionist organization. No, that's correct. Th- there are certainly some secessionists that are members of, Lots or of rather them. participants of, the larger organization. I don't know what the breakdown is. It would be actually interesting to to uh, do a poll of Free State Project participants and find out who supports the idea of secession, because there are some who sort of support it but they quietly support it like jason sorens the founder of the free state project he is an advocate for the idea of secession but not right now like he and when you talk to him about it he'll explain that he thinks that later would be a good time to talk about secession not right now right but i disagree i think that now is the right time to talk about secession because if we want secession to become a reality We have to speak it into reality. We have to talk about it enough with enough of our friends and family and neighbors and, you know, people at church or, you know, the knitting club or school or wherever it is that you go and you spend time. We've got to get the idea out there and and percolating into people's minds so that finally when somebody comes along with sort of the political gumption to advocate for secession— your average Republican or Democrat isn't likely to do it, uh, but there are certain— Not until it gets popular enough. Exactly. So when somebody com- comes along and is willing to sort of step out there and say, hey, I'm a politician and I support secession or I support declaring independence for this state, then enough people will have heard about it at that point to where that person won't look like a total madman. Right. So I think it's important that, you know, I think we're laying the groundwork right now 
with this informational outreach that's going on across New Hampshire, I can tell you, you know, when I've done this outreach, I've done it at the out front of the baseball game. I've done it out in front of uh, or in the uh, the county fair as well, and just sort of on the streets sometimes during festivals and things like that. And generally, the reaction is very, very good. Um, most of the time, people won't ask you anything. They'll just take your flyer and, and move on. But when people do ask a question like, well, what's this about? You know, the uh, quick answer that I usually give is, so it's about New Hampshire declaring independence. And then you just sort of, I just sort of let that sit and let their gears turn on their own to try to figure out what that means. And usually the reaction is very, very positive. Like, oh, yeah, you know, their, their, their face will light up, they'll smile. And I don't know if that same reaction will happen if you try this in, oh, I don't know, Mississippi or Louisiana or California, for that matter. I'm, I'm not sure. It'd be interesting to have somebody kind of report back on what secession outreach is like in other places. But I think in New Hampshire, I think that there's a, there's a mentality among a lot of the natives here that New Hampshire is great. And, yeah, some of them probably like the federal government, but I think a lot of them see the value, it, right? You know, just initially, just on the on hearing the idea, I think a lot of them see the value in the concept of declaring independence. Right. And one of the main things, uh, especially, you know, if it let's just say there is somebody that really likes the federal government, but they don't like taxes. Well, if New Hampshire were independent from the U.S. federal government— they would not have payroll taxes withheld. They would keep more of their money. So, you know, mm-hmm. like that's somewhere. Well, hey, that's look. a huge raise. Huge. Yeah. That's what, like 25, 30 percent, depending on how much you're making. Yeah, I don't know, man. But it's it's whatever it is. It's a lot of money for people. Yeah. And then you look at some of the other things like, you know, our roads would be better because we wouldn't be sending 30 cents of every gallon of gas right. to Washington. Yeah, and is that it New, would stay here? Is it New Hampshire a donor state as well to where yes. meaning the terminology means that uh, of all the 50 states, some states uh, give more than they get back, if you will, from the federal government. Of course, they get back in the form of corporate welfare and crap like that and government programs. But nonetheless, New Hampshire's pouring more money into the federal government yes. than is coming back in various different means. Right. And I heard somebody not too long ago say that they saw a statistic that New Hampshire receives like one of the highest per capita something from the feds. And I was like, that can't be accurate because, you know, like New Hampshire is a donor state unless they're calculating some kind of weird way because there's military bases and there's Mm. a port in Portsmouth and something and, you know, like... That there could be some kind of way where you could run the numbers that looks like New Hampshire winds up benefiting hmm. by having a federal government, but every other kind of way that you look at it, New Hampshire gets harmed. Well, whether it's a donor state or whether your state's a donor state or not, everybody will benefit from secession, except for you know people in, that are receiving corporate welfare and other goodies from the federal government. Um, but I think generally people are going to really benefit from this idea. And is it too early to talk about secession? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And as my uh, partner that was handing flyers out with me pointed out, well, how will you know when it's time to talk about secession? If it's too early right now to talk about these ideas, at what point will you figure that it's the right time for it? Later. (laughs) Yeah, what does that even mean? 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. We're on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Discover how deep your American roots go for free this 4th of July weekend. Go to TryAncestry.com to get free access through July 5th. Visit TryAncestry.com anytime this Wednesday through Sunday, and you'll have free access to our collection of records from the original 13 colonies and with a new visual story experience. Celebrate this 4th of July and take advantage of this free access weekend. Visit TryAncestry.com. That's T-R-Y Ancestry.com. TryAncestry.com. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. 
This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are still standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. Whether you want to talk about secession or whatever happens to be on your mind, you can dial us up here toll free at 855 450 free coming up the latest or an update on what's happening in greece let's just say it's not getting any better uh not anytime soon we'll uh, explain the pensioners who have besieged the banks to grab quick cash this actually happened a couple days ago but we didn't uh, talk about it here and uh, the toll-free number if you want to join us again 855 450 free peacekeeper 1.0 was released at the end of 2014 and we talked about it here on free talk live uh there were some problems though uh, the, there were some bugs with the program that need to be ironed out and the developers have spent the last six months learning from the first app they learned what doesn't work and what does work and how to build upon it now the idea of peacekeeper is a great one it's to create a decentralized network of basically kind of emergency services providers people who are your friends and your uh, neighbors and you know your loved ones people who when you send out an alert they can show up they know you they're going to treat you probably better than a lot of the folks at 911 might uh, might treat you these government responders now, i'm not saying that the government emergency responders are all bad but when it's like you know pulling the fire alarm right you don't know what they're going to do when they show up to rescue you whereas if somebody fr- a friend of yours or a neighbor might be more compassionate they might be more likely to and and uh, faster right they might get there on the scene quicker they might be able to put out a fire before it gets even worse it's a great idea and the version 2.0 that they are going to start working on once they complete their crowdfunding campaign 
is going to have some really cool new features in it. You can go to pk.freetalklive.com to learn more about it. You can fund them through the crowdfunding uh, over at Indiegogo and, of course, get perks. And Peacekeeper can change the world, and you can help by contributing to their Indiegogo campaign today at pk.freetalklive.com. That's pk, like peacekeeper, Dot freetalklive.com. It is Ian with you tonight. And Daryl. Daryl, you and I uh, started out the show talking about secession. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think we talk about secession enough here on Free Talk Live. It's, uh, it's a very important topic, the idea of, and I think it's time has come again, right? The first time they fired on a fort, allegedly, if you believe the story. Some say it was a uh, false flag, but somebody fired on a fort, and that kind of made things go real bad with uh, the whole secession thing. Hold right? on. No, the, the first time of secession was in 1776 good point when the colonists got basically ticked off that king george was oppressing them sent troops to go you know like further oppress them and so you're talking about the second time in american history where secession was tried and both sides claim that the other side fired first oh is that right so Right. So, uh, you know, the Confederate side is that the fort or the people in the fort fired upon the ships that were going to the fort. Mm -hmm. The U.S. side says, no, they fired at the fort from the ships. Hmm. So, you know, like both sides say he started it. So we don't really know who actually started it. It could have just been, you know, like somebody said, I heard a gunshot and started firing. Can secession happen, uh, Daryl, peacefully? It has happened peacefully around the world. Can it happen in the United States peacefully? Uh, possibly, hopefully. Uh, there, there were some places in the Confederacy that tried to secede from the Confederacy mm. to remain neutral. And, of course, both the U.S. Army and the Confederate Army went in and conscripted every male that they could find that was a fighting age so you know like people have tried to remain neutral in wars and yeah the u.s military doesn't really want that to happen like they want there to be a boogeyman they want people to fight like that that's what militaries do like you know if militaries didn't exist there wouldn't be wars right well you'd still have like the hatfields and the mccoys maybe like some Right, fights. but that would be a feud, not yeah. a war. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, like there there would not be drone bombs being or drones dropping bombs on people in Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, no doubt. Syria, uh, Pakistan, and wherever reason else. Number one. That's reason number one. If there one. wasn't a U.S. military. Uh, to me, that's a the huge reason to support secession right there, to get away from supporting the military state. And people who are, you know, the peaceniks out there, the Quakers of the world. They really ought to get behind the idea of declaring independence because a lot of them, you know, they don't really seem to have consistency. They don't want the military, but yet they still want or they don't want the military uh, warmongering, but yet they still love the idea of big government in in a lot of different ways. So if you want to share your thoughts with us here tonight, our toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Daryl, you are running for president and uh, you're running for president in 2016. Yes. Under the Liberty Party. Is that right? Uh, well, there's the newly formed Liberty Party that formed just a couple of weeks ago Tell me at about Pork that. Fest. What is that? Uh, it's very similar to the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Uh, there's one plank that is omitted from the uh, larger party's uh, platform mm-hmm. that is in the New Hampshire's uh, party platform. And that is saying in the state party platform, it says... Uh, Members of the Liberty Party believe that New Hampshire should secede from the U.S. government. Yeah. Uh, For the national organization, it seemed to not really make sense to say the federal government should secede from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So, like, that plank was removed. Uh, But the other ones are all there. And there there is a self-determination plank in there where it talks about people have the right to self-determination. Okay. Uh, it just doesn't say, you know, like this organization should secede. So the, uh, okay. So the New Hampshire Liberty Party is a secessionist political party. Right. Its main purpose is to drive forward within the realm of politics, the idea of secession. So to run candidates who support secession, you and I are two of the founding members of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. So what you're saying is this national Liberty Party 
it supports your right to self-determination, but the planks or the platform doesn't actually mention secession. It doesn't doesn't mention supporting uh, states uh, seceding from the union. Right, but so far there are groups in two states. I, at this point, will not say what two states, mm-hmm. but there are groups in two states other than New Hampshire where their platform does specify that their state uh, should secede. So they have the same five planks in their state platform that the New Hampshire Liberty Party has oh, in interesting. its. Oh, wow. But okay. the national platform just does not have that this entity should secede from the U.S. government plank. Got it. Okay. So that's that's interesting. I didn't realize there were other state liberty parties that have uh, they are forming they they have not officially formed they've not had their organizational meetings yet Mm -hmm. okay but i've been working with people behind the scenes on helping to get those formed how would one if they are listening to this conversation and are interested in getting involved in doing something in their state or perhaps assisting with these two Liberty Party dot info is mm-hmm. the website for the National Liberty Party. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Liberty yeah. Party dot info. Yes, that got put up uh I, I believe it was Tuesday, so it was earlier this week. Planks are up there, everything's up there. Planks are up there, bylaws okay. are up there, there's a uh, join on there. So, you know, if you agree with the platform, you want to join Go there, uh, libertyparty.info. There's a tab for join. Let's talk more about your presidential campaign coming up here uh, in moments. 855, 450 free. And will you be supporting secession as a presidential candidate? Absolutely. All right, we'll come back with more here. Uh, This is Free Talk Live, 855, 450 free. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kits special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. 
from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Back with more Free Talk Live. We'll uh, give you an update on Greece here in a little bit. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Plus, the Supreme Court has ruled in not a very good manner towards home searches. We will tell you more about that. Our toll-free number. That's mm-hmm. actually a fairly old court ruling. Is it? Maybe I just uh, just did not notice the date on that. You're right. You're right. That is an old ruling. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, I saw that come up in my news feed earlier today on Facebook. Somebody's like, I can't believe what the Supreme Court just ruled. And I hovered over it because I remembered uh, reading and reporting on this and saw that it was from last year and was like, whoa, this is old. Actually, yeah, you're right. It was from last year. But like, it's still a very important story. And if we have time, we'd Definitely should talk about yeah, it. I'll, I'll summarize it uh, later when we when we do have time for that. Uh, our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. So uh, we've got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm and uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. FreedomsPhoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to FreedomsPhoenix.com. Get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's FreedomsPhoenix.com. As we continue, Ian and Daryl in the studio um, learning about the Liberty Party, uh, which I didn't really know that much about. I knew there was some plan afoot to create a National Liberty Party. You'd mentioned it. Uh, you and I were two of the three founding members of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Which, yes. We actually found, what was that, 2012? 2012, September of 2012. Yeah, so coming up on uh, three years now that that's been around. And the New Hampshire Liberty Party was founded out of uh, frustration, I think, with the Libertarian Party primarily. Right. Because for those of us, you and I, Daryl, are folks who've been involved with the libertarian movement for a long time, and we've been around long enough to know that the National Libertarian Party is a shadow of its formal, former self. Yes. Back in the heyday of the LP in the 90s and uh, the very early aughts, they had, of course, Harry Brown, who was their presidential candidate in 1996 and 2000, and he was awesome. I'm a huge Harry Brown fan. I'm a Harry Brown libertarian all the way. He's the guy who kind of brought me into the movement with with that campaign. And and then after the 2004 election, they just started bringing in these really unprincipled uh, candidates for president. But before that, you could tell based on the press releases and the the newsletters that they would put out that they had slid away from having the, the principal basis to the party that they had always been really um, known for and that that was what had separated the Libertarian Party, in my mind, from the other political parties, was that when you join the Libertarian Party, you and I think you still have to, there's a statement that you have to sign that says, I don't support or advocate the initiation of force to achieve political or social goals. Yes. And... You know, I know that word for word because to me, when I sign a, a pledge like that, a, an agreement like that, that meant something to me. Like, I'm going to put my signature to this statement. That is meaningful to me. If I don't agree with this statement, I shouldn't sign it. And unfortunately, 
there are a bunch of people in the Libertarian Party who clearly don't agree with that statement and have yet signed it anyway. Right, and there are some states that have actually gotten away from the liberty, the Libertarian Pledge. which that, is That pledge. That pledge is called the Libertarian Pledge. There are some states that have gotten away, like they, they've, they've done away with it, it. As a requirement to join the party? It, it's not there. Oh, terrible. So you become a libertarian by giving them a certain amount of money and saying, I want to be a libertarian. That's terrible. That's how people like Wayne Allen Root and Bob Barr were able to join the party. So they could join a state-level party and not have to sign the, the agreement at the national level? That's correct. Whoa, I didn't realize that was happening at all. Yes. Yeah, that's been happening for about a decade. I just figured people were joining the National Party and just, you know, ignoring the thing that they're signing to join the party. Because there's no enforcement of it. It's not like there's some sort of party purity committee that goes around and audits people. Right. So, and well, anyway, whatever method they did it, they, these people, like the people you mentioned, Bob Barr... Uh, came into the party and sort of Bob Barr, he was the 2008 presidential candidate and, and he was kind of the culmination of all that had come before, right? All of these people who are, let's call them conservative lights, had uh, had joined the, the party. And- I, I call it the ooh shiny thing caucus mm. because, and, and that's, you know, how Gary Johnson wound up getting the nomination in 2012 is you had this large group of people, ooh, shiny thing this guy has name recognition Ooh, shiny thing i want the shiny thing right because they want to have a chance at winning an right. election. right and they, they go think. after the shiny thing and they don't care that the shiny thing has no substance they just want the shiny thing to gary johnson's credit he was better than bob barr i'll give him that that's not really saying a lot though <laughs> yeah he's uh, again yeah a shadow of the previous presidential candidate so anyway the libertarian party has sort of fallen into disrepair it's still out there there's still you know fielding candidates but it's hard for somebody like me who really appreciates the ideas of liberty on a principled basis to get behind the national libertarian party and so that's one of the reasons why this liberty party was formed we'll talk more about your candidacy coming up here daryl but we're going first to a different daryl this one is in saint george utah listening to kznu hey daryl hey i've got a uh perspective on secession, you know, I think with the pres- the precedent that was set during the Civil War, I mean, I'm just not seeing that a state is going to be able to secede from the Union. Why is that? But, you know, something... Are you saying that uh, there's going to be violence? I, I'm not saying violence. I just, uh, you know, something that's close to us, you know, in my area down here was the Bundy, you know, ranch thing. You know, you, people may have seen that. You know, it's not really a secession last, uh, story, though, right? I mean, that's just a well, well, no, well, well but it's just you know, kind of a, a, a you know, federal land rights type thing. Yeah. I just don't see that the federal government is going to stand by and let that happen. But something that that I think and but and when you might, say they're they're not going to let it happen, you don't necessarily mean they're going to roll in tanks. You mean like they're going to make the if if New Hampshire were to secede, for instance, that they would put up border fences and make it really difficult for you know for products to come into the New Hampshire, the new country of New Hampshire. There, I, yeah, I just, I just don't think. New I'll Hampshire give you that. I think that, uh, but, I, I think the they're going to try to make it as difficult as they possibly can. But ultimately, if, yeah. if you know, the political populace, the voting populace decides that they support secession, there's very little the federal government can do to, you know, force them to stay in the union. I mean, as far as if, if a bunch of people just decided, well, I'm not going to pay taxes anymore. You know, if 51 percent of the people in a state yeah. stop paying taxes, what could they really do about that? Well, and the, and the the question I have is, you know, at least you know off the top of my head, other than Alaska and Hawaii, uh, most of I mean all of the states uh, became states. I mean it's been well over a hundred years, um, and look at how much has changed in that time. You know, is there a better chance of maybe uh, a portion of a state peeling off and becoming a new territory, becoming their own state, versus seceding from you know? I would you say know, there's a better that? chance I mean, of secession more... because in order to really? in order to break away from an existing state, so let's say Northern California, uh, they break away and then they want to become a state. They then have to get approval from the federal government to become a state, and approval just leaving, and approval from the legislature of the state in which they are leaving. That's true. Yeah. So that remember about a year ago, year and a half maybe. There was the news about 11 counties in Colorado 
that were planning to secede from the state of Colorado and form like North Colorado. Yep. And it doesn't matter that the county delegation from those 11 counties said, we want to be North Colorado. Right. They still have to go to Denver and get permission from the Colorado legislature. To leave. Permission to, to leave. leave. And then after they get permission to leave from the Colorado legislature, they have to then go to the U.S. Congress to get permission to be and a state. say, please give us permission to leave Colorado and become a state. And I don't see if you're planning to leave, why leave and then rejoin the thing that you just left? It would be like getting a divorce from your wife and then remarrying your well, ex-wife. The, well, that's because, Daryl, and thanks, Daryl, for the call. I appreciate it. That's because Daryl in studio, Daryl. Uh, because those people aren't looking to leave the United States. They don't see the value in leaving the United States. They only want to get away from the state government that they don't like. They're not, they're not going far enough to begin with. It's Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to OneSilverSolution.com. OneSilverSolution.com. There is only one Silver Solution. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. 
Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free, 855 450 free. Maybe you want to talk about secession. How is the secession movement where you live? Maybe you're in Vermont or Hawaii where there's actually uh, one that uh, I'm aware of at least. Uh, maybe there's smaller groups in other states. What are you doing this weekend? If not, nothing? Well, maybe you should plan something. Tomorrow is a great day for getting out and finding a crowd of people. If you're going to want to talk, if you want to talk to people about secession, uh, now's a good time of year. Of course, if you don't already have things printed up, then you're probably a little bit too late to the party. Although it's not too late to, you know, send a quick quickie order into Staples tonight or something like that and have it printed up, have some cheap black and white flyers printed up for tomorrow morning. But, you know, these are great times to talk to people about these ideas. And that sort of led into a, a conversation about uh, national level politics and uh, Daryl W. Perry in the studio with me. I'm Ian. Uh, Daryl, you are one of the chair people, I presume, of the National Liberty Party. Is that right? Actually, I am not. You're not? Okay. You just were involved in the, the founding of it to some extent? That's correct. How's that work? How do you get... You're just sort of involved in, like, hammering out the platform and right. things I, like I'm that? Right. I'm sort of behind the scenes mm-hmm. on the National Liberty Party. The mastermind, if you will. <laughs> Uh, you could say that. I, I certainly would not use that no. <laughs> term to describe myself. Okay. But a uh, good James Cleveland reference yeah. there. It's a Colbert Report re- reference. Yes. Uh, no, so I, I helped the people form the National Party. Mm-hmm. I'm running the website for them okay. uh, temporarily. They're at some point next uh, late winter, early spring, sometime before Memorial Day, will be a national convention. Oh, really? Where new party officers will be elected and presumably a presidential candidate will be nominated. Now, you are running for president. Yes. That's a definite, like whether or not you get nominated for the Liberty Party or the Libertarian, Libertarian Party, party or Green whatever. Party or whatever. Well, uh, I, I'm not seeking the Green Party nomination. Okay, I, I am seeking the Libertarian Party and, Liberty and party? the Liberty Party. Can you be nominated by two different political parties? In theory, yes. Uh, the practicality of ballot access mm-hmm. might determine otherwise because not every Meaning state it's has hard. fusion. It's super hard to get on the ballot in a lot of places. And you, if there's no fusion or whatever, then you'd have to qualify for both parties, right? So, like, in New Hampshire, there's not fusion. So uh, you would not be able to petition under two ballot labels. In, say, South Carolina, for instance, where they do have fusion— and there is a party down there, the Independence Party, mm-hmm. that I'm going to be reaching out to at some point to find out if they're, I don't know if they ever nominate presidential candidates or not, but I'm going to see if they might be interested in nominating somebody. And if they are, I'll throw my hat in the ring. But for instance, South Carolina, if I were to get the Libertarian nomination and the Independence Party of South Carolina said Daryl's our candidate, I would be on the ballot twice in South Carolina oh, wow. because South Carolina has fusion. Okay. Uh, yeah. New York State has fusion. So a lot of times there's parties that exist only because they cross endorse candidates. So the Working Families Party exists as a major political party in the state of New York only because they cross nominate Democrats for the top level office. That candidate gets enough votes on their ballot line for that party to stay qualified as a party. So your goal is to be nominated by both the Libertarians and the Liberty Party? or My or goal other? is to have, as, have the option for as many people as possible across the country to vote for an actual Libertarian candidate for president. Now— uh, the Libertarian Party does their own nominations process internally. There's not like a primary or something like there that. There are them. some states that have primaries, but they are non-binding primaries. For the Libertarians. For the Libertarians. So it's, I believe, California, North Carolina, 
Montana, Missouri, possibly Idaho, possibly Delaware, and I'm I think I'm forgetting a couple of states. Arizona's one. Mm, that's okay. Uh, some of those, it's more difficult than others for a libertarian to actually get on the primary ballot of the Libertarian Party. So, for instance, Arizona changed their law recently to where previously it had been any candidate that was mentioned in the news as having been a candidate was on the ballot mm. automatically by decree of the Secretary of State. They've changed that to say that you must gather either 1,000 petitions oh, or be on the primary ballot in at least 20 other states. So that's not even going to happen. I mean, you, I don't know how much kind of money you're going to throw I could call this, up but. Ernie Hancock and ask if he wants to have some fun collecting signatures, yeah. but probably not. It's hard. It's hard to get those right. seats. I mean, you got if you don't have a bunch of time that you can pour into it personally, you've got to hire somebody, and then you're paying right. a, a buck a signature is the typical price point there. So what— um, you're going to be on some state ballots. That's probably something you can accomplish, I would guess. Yes. Uh, and, realistically, I'm, I am I think I can get on five. And uh, if you get the Libertarian Party nomination, then you could be on far more than that. I uh, mean, generally, the Libertarian Possibly 45 50. to 50. Uh, so, like, the Libertarian Party, you know, as bad as they are on the, the principles, if they were to somehow get behind someone with principles like you have, right. then they are pretty good at, you know, they're experienced. Each state party is experienced at getting on the ballot for right. getting the presidential The only candidate. state where it's going to be incredibly difficult for the Libertarians to get on the ballot is going to be Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Although I believe they recently eased their ballot access restriction, but it's still not the greatest. It's one of the worst out there, right? Yeah, it's one of the worst, and there's not been anybody other than a Republican or a Democrat on for president since 2000. Wow. Okay, so the Harry Brown campaign was the last time then. Yes. So, uh, all right, so you're going for the Libertarian nomination. Now, I used to watch the Libertarian debates. They will have a debate within the party of the candidate, the candidates, those who want to run for president. Yes. And can you, I mean, is, is it pretty much like a guarantee that as long as you throw your hat in and you're a member of the party, you'll get into that particular debate? Uh, well, at one time, that was a guarantee. They oh, no. changed the rules now what? Uh, during the last convention uh -oh. to where you have to get a certain number of tokens to be able to get into the debate. And where do you get the tokens? At the convention? At the convention from delegates to the convention. So the idea so being that you talk to people. So in 2012, the only two people that were in that debate was Gary Johnson and Lee Wright. Wow, they only had two? Because I remember back in the day when there were like the, five. There were only two that got enough tokens. Oh, so it's not just any token. It's a certain arbitrary number. You, you've got to get a certain number of tokens. I don't recall what that number is. Oh, man. But there's actually going to be a debate in Connecticut in September and one in Massachusetts in October, okay. and I intend to be at both of those. Okay. Yeah, right, so cool. the Connecticut uh, Libertarian State Convention is September 19th. Somewhere in East Hartford. What, what are the uh, the pl the planks? What are what, you know? Normally, when somebody runs for political office, there's like two or three big issues they push. What are you going to be pushing as uh, Daryl W. Perry for president? Secession, self determination, and abolish all victimless crimes. All right, those are pretty good. I can. Th I think a lot of people can get behind that. And uh, so, is there a campaign website already? DarylWPerry.com. DarylWPerry.com. And one com. one thing that's interesting about my campaign mm -hmm. is back in 2013 a long time before Rand Paul started taking Bitcoin I sent a letter to the FEC saying that I would not comply with any of their campaign finance rules Whoa. that I would only be accepting cryptocurrency and oh, wow. precious metals so not complying with their campaign finance rules would that put you in prison possibly uh, possibly if they want to push it Wow, okay, that's, that's pretty brave. It's I know probably that. going to, they, they might say, if I raise over a certain threshold, they might say, like, you know, I owe them money as a penalty for not filing, and then if I huh. push that I'm not going to pay, then, you know, possibly prison. I, I don't know if the FEC has ever thrown anybody in prison Maybe that's for everybody's, not paying a fine. I suspect that's because everybody's obedient and probably pays up. Right. I think you're, you're definitely playing with some fire there on that one, Daryl. I mean, these guys probably take this campaign stuff pretty seriously at the federal level. Well, it's not as, like as of right now, I am running no risk of meeting their threshold. Okay. 
Unfortunately, and the threshold is what five thousand U.S. dollars. If you raise five th- more than five thousand, uh, uh, raise 5, or expend. Or okay, got it. Then you have to report, but otherwise yes. you don't. Yes, I'm actually surprised about that. I'm surprised that you don't have to report under five thousand. I figured they would cram that down your throat at all levels. No, so the threshold for federal office is five thousand. Okay. Just like here in New Hampshire, you, you run here. for state. Yeah, yeah it's like five hundred. So if you spend under that, they right. It's not worth their time care. to look at the papers. Yeah, that's how I did my uh, gubernatorial campaign. I didn't spend anything except for like $2.50 on postage. Right. And that was it. Oh, and you couldn't take Bitcoin contributions without taking um, like names and information from oh, people? Oh, right. So, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Bitcoin uh, regulations that they came out with last year. All right, 855 450 free. Daryl's running for president. DarylWPerry.com, was it? Yes. All right. More coming up here in moments. Hour number two is on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, my name's Cody, and I want to tell you about Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is the world's first decentralized peer-to-peer protection system. We are developing a smartphone app that revolutionizes how people protect one another. Peacekeeper is a disruptive alternative to the status quo. Peacekeeper is a leap forward in protection services, allowing neighbors to respond far more quickly than police and fire services can. And this is a real community builder, too. Visit peacekeeper.org and join us. What are you doing? Looking for the best hotel value in America. That's easy. It's America's Best Value Inn. Really? Sure. They have over a 1,000 hotels across North America. Okay, that's good. They offer free Wi-Fi, continental breakfast, and HBO at most locations. That's even better. And when you join their free value club, you get 15% off, room upgrade, and late checkout when available. You're right. America's Best Value Inn is the best hotel value in America. Book a room today at abvi.com. Done. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,170 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $256. Antiwar.com reports, while the war against the Islamic State inside Iraq looks likely to continue for the foreseeable future, Iraqi Kurdistan is already looking toward the post-war period and sees secession as a top priority of the post-war era, despite Obama administration opposition. U.S. troops on the ground say they have been informed the Kurds intend to secede from Iraq, whether the U.S. likes it or not, and is planning to take the northern city of Kirkuk, an oil-rich city that is historically Kurdish, but has recently had a large Arab population with them. Tensions between the Kurdistan regional government and the Shiite-dominated central government have been growing for years with disputes over oil payments bringing the Kurds close to de facto separation several times in the recent past. The war against the Islamic State has given the Kurdistan regional government an opportunity to expand its territorial possessions along the frontier and to acquire weapons from foreign powers looking to turn the tide against the Islamic State. By the time the war is over, the Kurds are likely to have enough power to be able to successfully break away from Iraq. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a former U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent pled guilty Wednesday to charges that he stole $200,000 in Bitcoin and tried to sell law enforcement secrets while investigating the online drug marketplace, Silk Road. Carl M. Force was the lead undercover agent with direct contact to Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht, who allegedly went by the moniker Dread Pirate Roberts. The Justice Department said Force, who went under the aliases Knob and French Maid during the investigation, offered to sell Ulbricht fake driver's license and law enforcement secrets about the government's Silk Road investigation in exchange for more than $200,000 in Bitcoin. He deposited the currency into his personal accounts. Assistant Attorney General Caldwell said former DEA agent Carl Force crossed the line from enforcing the law to breaking it. Seduced by the perceived anonymity of the virtual currency and the dark web, Force used invented online personas and encrypted messages to fraudulently obtain Bitcoin worth hundreds of thousands of dollars from the government and investigative targets alike. Investigators said Force also admitted to signing a $240,000 contract with 20th Century Fox to assist in a movie about the Silk Road investigation investigation without approval from the DEA. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a freight train carrying flammable and toxic gas derailed in eastern Tennessee, igniting a fire in one car and spreading noxious fumes that forced the evacuation of more than 5,000 people and the hospitalization of at least 25. Homes and businesses were evacuated following the derailment around midnight Wednesday of the CSX train in Blount County, Tennessee, near Maryville. CSX and U.S. regulators are investigating the cause of the derailment. Local officials said the Environmental Protection Agency was monitoring air quality in the area. At least 25 people were admitted to Blunt Memorial Hospital with respiratory issues, while another 27 were held for observation in the emergency room at various times. Firefighters were allowing the blaze to burn itself out on the advice of specialists, as attempts to extinguish it could be hazardous. CSX said at 3.30 p.m. that the tank car continued to burn, making it unsafe to establish any transfer operations. Officials said Maryville residents could be forced from their homes for up to two days, and the Red Cross had set up a shelter in a nearby high school. Residents within a two-mile radius were evacuated initially, according to the Federal Railroad Administration. The zone was reduced to only one and a half miles from the scene of the accident later on Thursday. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The nation's quadriplegics immobilized on Washington in support of stem cell research, and a Penn State t-shirt is awkwardly looked away from. And now for the weekly feature your fragile, susceptible mind already has your lips salivating for. This is The Onion Week in Review. Sources reported today that 10-year-old Brandon Thomas, who is currently homesick at his friend Kevin's sleepover, needs to just tough it the f*** out. I don't feel like playing Xbox right now. The pathetic little bitch who claims he just doesn't feel like eating any birthday cake or joining in any activities with his friends, frankly needs to grow a pair because his parents only live 10 minutes away, for Christ's sake. Here's what the whiny pansy had to say for himself. I wasn't crying. It's just allergies. I want to go home. What a f***ing wuss. In other news, a voicemail from mom is deleted three words in, and a man with nice eyes is blown. All right, now off with you. I can't have you seeing me like this. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We invite you to join us here. Bring up whatever is on your mind at 855-450-FREE with you tonight. It's Ian. And Daryl. And we were talking in the last hour quite a bit about secession and the uh, political party that's out there advocating for secession, the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Now there's a national version 
of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. So it was founded originally in New Hampshire, and now there are two other states that are going to have their own Liberty Parties. There's a national-level party, and uh, Daryl, you are going to be seeking the presidential nod from the Liberty Party as well as the Libertarian Party. As yes. As frustrating as uh, that party might particularly be, uh, you're still going to go for it. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch it happen because— there are a lot of people within the Libertarian Party who just don't care about the principles of liberty, and I imagine you will be up against them when you get up to their yes. convention. So there was something you wanted to talk further about, Bitcoin and political contributions, because political contributions are notoriously regulated strictly by the FEC, I believe it is. Yes, is right? the Federal Elections Commission, and uh, the way we got onto Bitcoin was I had mentioned the letter that I sent to... The FEC back in 2013 saying that I would not be complying with any of their regulations and that I would not be accepting basically, you know, state money. I would only be accepting cryptocurrency and precious metals. So if somebody comes to you with $100 in cash, you're going to have to turn them down. Either that or find somebody that can turn it to Bitcoin. Hmm, okay. And I actually at Porkfest had somebody that approached me with a $20 bill and I said, I can't take this. Somebody was sitting right next to me that said, I can turn that into Bitcoin for you. Nice. So, you know, I, I did get a donation of Bitcoin. I also got a donation of a couple silver dimes mm -hmm. at Porkfest. But uh, at the time when I sent the letter, there were no regulations from the FEC on cryptocurrency. Sometime last year, I forget exactly when, the FEC came out with a regulation at the request of some group that said, you know, like, we want to take Bitcoin, so please make a regulation for us. Hmm. And so what the FEC said is you can accept Bitcoin, but you can't accept more than $100 of it from any donor. You still have to collect all of the info that you would otherwise collect from a donor, and you can't the use level. the Bitcoin directly. So you have to turn the Bitcoin into, into dollars before and then it's considered it. an in-kind contribution that somehow becomes oh, cash. God. And so it's this very convoluted thing. I bought bumper stickers from Bitcoin Not Bombs for their bring uh, vote for nobody to Porkfest mm -hmm. with Bitcoin. Right. So I, I had Bitcoin. They accepted Bitcoin. I bought bumper stickers with Bitcoin. But that wasn't for your campaign. That was something else. Uh, that most certainly definitely was it for was my for campaign. The, campaign. the bumper stickers that were on the Free Talk Live table. Oh, oh, I thought, you meant, pork fest. I thought you meant you bought some of their bumper stickers. No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, the Daryl W. Perry for President bumper stickers I bought with Bitcoin. So you are in violation then of the I'm FCC most certainly in violation. And you don't know what the, p the potential penalties are for this? I have no clue. At some point, oh, I'll God. probably find out end maybe. Up in federal prison. <laughs> I don't Hopefully know, they'll put me in a cell with Ross Albrecht. We can have a nice <laughs> chat about stuff. Let's go to your phone calls and thoughts here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I mean, i got to give you kudos for the civil disobedience. Uh, I, I don't think I'd be playing with that fire. Let's go to Wesley in New York. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Wesley in New York, going yes. once. Hello, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, um, I was uh, listening to an issue that you guys – had discussed about ATF uh, uh, stealing guns from mom and pop shops in the area that you guys broadcast from. Uh, this and, is news uh, to me. Was this when was this last night's show? Because I wasn't on last night. Neither was Daryl. This was, uh, I believe, it, it said May fifteenth, so it was probably a little while back. Okay. But I wanted to explain to you. We are with Senator Chuck Grosley right now, and the ATF. Um, did the job. I'm not sure if you know about it. It was about the Fast and Furious Gun Runner program. And my family, my brother and my uncle, had a shop with me. And they literally gave, they literally broke into our shop, stole 300 assault rifles, uh. and turned them over to an, a criminal. And, and this was in New York? Thing, this was actually in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. And they have no reason. Or no authorization to take any of these guns, nevertheless, turn them over to a public citizen and allow her to sell them out of her house. Or, or even at the precinct parking lot to sell them without having an FFL license, nor a corporation, and all these assault rifles 
that uh, were stolen uh, are on the street. Did you get video? So now from is this what? Did you get video of the raid of them yeah, stealing we, your stuff? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we have video of them stealing our stuff. Yes, we do. Is that we video online? Is it on YouTube? Today. Yeah, you, um, we actually uh, did a thing we called AXJ National Survival Store on Facebook. And Wells Fargo conspired with them in helping them because they took $100,000 worth of checks and bought more guns with our bank account and then took our bank account number, gave it to somebody else, so we could no longer see or access the account. This is you're saying the e time. excuse me, you're saying the ATF did all this? That's horrifying. Where is this documented Absolutely. online? Where can people go to find the video of the raid and any other uh, information about this? It's called AXJ National Survival Store on Facebook. All capital. Okay, and you're saying that there is a uh, there's going to be a video of them raiding your your store when people go there. Yeah, they 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 raided our store. They stole everything, even the booklet, the paperwork, the documentation, and they had no authorization to do this. As Senator Chuck Grassley of the head of Judiciary Committee, the chairman hmm. is now investigating their illegal action to this moment. There, I'm working with them right now on filing questions to give to ATF headquarters on their unjust actions and what was their cause and, and reasons for doing this. Yeah, it sounds because pretty outrageous. Robert, I mean, it, it definitely sounds like a real shock, and I'm sorry to hear that that happened to you. Uh, so we'll take a look around for that. I looked on YouTube. I looked for a national survival survival store. I know you're saying, is, so the so video is on Facebook? On, it's not on YouTube? Yeah, it'll be on Facebook. I found you guys on YouTube. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, uh, Wesley, good and luck out there. Keep us, uh, if you want to, you can keep updating us on the, the case as it develops. And thank you for the call tonight. Just so terrible, the federal government coming in, whether it's to gun stores or marijuana supply shops, and just stealing people's stuff, taking people's property, and then acting like it's theirs, like they own it. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, they never actually charge the person with a crime. They just say, uh, yeah, we think it's connected to something illegal. We don't have to prove that it's connected to something illegal. Right, you have we to prove. We just think that it's connected to something illegal, so uh, it's ours now. And then you have to prove that it wasn't connected to right. something illegal. Or that if it was, you had no knowledge that it was. Let's go to Charles. He's in Kansas City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Charles. Yes, I'm here. Uh, how you guys doing? Great. Go ahead with your thoughts, Charles. Um, just uh, actually, I was just I found you guys on YouTube. I follow your. Uh, this is a tour of truth, right? This is what? Tour of truth. Pillar of truth. To Torah truth. Torah truth. T o r a h. Yes. Are you are you are you asking if this is a radio show called Torah Truth? Yes, you or something. Not listen, no, to that is not what this show is. This is Free Talk Live. <laughs> it's an open phones panel discussion with a pro liberty viewpoint. Panel discussion. What did you want to share tonight? Okay, that's the number that I got. Uh -huh. um, was the show uh, onto a couple of YouTube videos, and I was hoping that I was talking to the same guy that no, uh, I don't I think so. Followed. But you can talk to our audience if you want. What did you want to share? Oh uh, well, I had a couple questions or concerns I wanted to throw at, you know, uh, the Torah seekers. And uh, what is a Torah <clears throat> seeker? What does that mean? The Torah. Well, um, that's a little um, broad and abstract of a topic, but right, it's fair um, enough. It's, it's closely related to anglo-bio-linguistics studies. Yeah, it definitely does sound and, uh, way out of my league. Hey, thanks yeah. for the call, Charles. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number tonight. 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live, even if you don't know where you are or what you're doing. It's Free Talk Live. Discover how deep your American roots go for free this 4th of July weekend. Go to TryAncestry.com to get free access through July 5th. Visit TryAncestry.com anytime this Wednesday through Sunday, and you'll have free access to our collection of records from the original 13 colonies and with a new visual story experience. Celebrate this 4th of July and take advantage of this free access weekend. Visit TryAncestry.com. That's T-R-Y, Ancestry.com. TryAncestry.com. 
Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Honey, it's time for dinner. What are you doing over there on your computer? I'm shopping for a new wallet. Mine is falling apart. Hey, did you know there's a company called ID Stronghold that makes shielded wallets to prevent electronic pickpocketing? Oh, I didn't realize there was such a thing as electronic pickpocketing. What is that? Well, apparently, many of the new credit and debit cards being issued have radio chips inside them called RFID that transmit our banking information to card readers when we pay. Unfortunately, a bad guy can also get one of these readers and go around the city scanning people, collecting their credit card numbers and personal information without us knowing it. Wow, that sounds scary. Since you're getting a new wallet anyway, you should definitely get an ID Stronghold shielded wallet. Are they more expensive? No. In fact, I can get a shielded leather wallet from IDStronghold.com for the same price or less than regular unshielded wallets from other stores. Sounds great. My wallet isn't falling apart yet, but let me pick one out, too. I want to be protected, and these wallets at IDStronghold.com look fantastic. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're back. More Free Talk Live now. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, it's Ian. And Daryl. And if you're getting online, you need to protect yourself because you can't expect your internet service provider to protect you. They're probably one of the ones that is violating your privacy. They're likely recording every website you visit, all the search terms that you enter. They're probably copying those uh, that data down and then maybe selling that off to other companies or perhaps giving it away to the government. That's one thing. There's also criminals who could sniff out your Wi-Fi packets. You want to protect yourself from all of those people Get ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and you can download their software for free. It's for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. Get it set up. Get connected. A very easy process, and again, free to get started. And when you get connected, you're encrypted. Your internet connection no longer becomes the, uh, the knowledge of uh, your internet service provider. They're still going to provide you with the service, but they don't know what you're doing with it anymore as soon as you start using ProXPN. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. 
And by the way, you can save 50% off of the regular monthly price when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, and then 50 as in 50% off. It's unlimited bandwidth with the premium account, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites. It's a great deal, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 to get going with their premium account at ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We just had a guy call in um, before the one who was confused about which show he was calling. The guy calling about the gun store that was raided by the ATF, ATF stealing a bunch of the guns and then doing who knows what with them, possibly. He su he suggested they were giving them to uh, people in drug gangs, the whole, what was it, the run for the border uh, thing? Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious, that's what it Not is. Not the Vin Diesel movie, the uh, ATF DEA program. Right. And uh, so I did go to the Facebook page As that did he I. suggested, uh, AXJ National Survival Store, and I got to say... I'm having a real tough time finding the video that he promised me was going to be there. I had asked whether or not they had video of the ATF raiding their store, and he and he said they had it and that it was at this Facebook page, but I looked at the videos list and doesn't appear to be anything there. There are some videos, and you said they were phone calls or something like that? Uh, that was what the description said, yeah, and it looked it like... He was basically pointing the camera at a computer screen. I'll give the guy credit for putting up documentation. There's a lot of documentation yes. uh, here, but unfortunately, Facebook isn't the best way to organize things like this. Um, right. It, it just you know, just a couple of unsolicited suggestions for anybody out there who's been screwed by the state or by the federal government, and you want people to know your story. You got to get uh, a way to present your story. In a sort of chronological manner, and I guess Facebook has that to some extent in that it is chronologically or oriented, but it's just the way this this particular page is laid out, it's just like more of like stream of consciousness, just throwing right. stuff out there and lots of all caps typing, which is no, 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 you don't want to do that. That's going to turn people away and right. make so you look crazy. You, you want a website, you can yep. get one for free from WordPress. a variety of places, WordPress, Blogspot. Tumblr, uh, you could you know get a little bit of legitimacy by paying about twelve dollars to register a domain name. Yep, and then you point that to wherever your site is, and then you post things. Like it, it's not very difficult. No, it really isn't. And uh, and you know WordPress makes it easy with their with their system with its content management yes. system. So anyway, I just wanted to suggest to people to. Try to not use Facebook for this kind of thing. Also, another reason to not use Facebook is they are just awful. Um, Facebook, there was a situation recently with the Free Keen Facebook page. <laughs> and so there was a tool. That I, I'm laughing, but it's not It's not funny what yeah. happened. But it's one of those, like, if you don't laugh, you'll cry sort of things. Well, right. I mean, you can't do anything about it, so there's no point in being upset about it. But what happened was uh, somebody, gave me a, somebody gave me a report saying, hey, there's no more content on the Free Keen Facebook page, or very, very little. And so I went there, and sure enough, that person was right. All of the stories that had been you know, posted originally to freekeen.com and then the little posts were made on Facebook by a tool that I had used called Deliver It. And it was one of those things where you post to a blog, and then it automatically posts a sort of version of that to Facebook, right. linking to your blog. And it had worked very well for a while, or at least it seemed to be working well. And uh, whenever you're on Facebook, you'll see sometimes it'll say next to the post, like in the post information area, like by the date and the time that it was posted, it'll say buy and then like what tool was used to right. post it so like hootsuite or network uh, blogs is yeah. one that i use there's a bunch of this stuff wordpress there's a bunch of these things rss that can, graffiti right a lot of these tools that people can use to sort of auto syndicate their content ifttt if this then that so you'll see those and i learned this week that when facebook decides they don't want your tool posting to their site anymore when they pull the access for the tool that had been posting, so what happened was Deliver It had some kind of internal issue that Facebook didn't like. 
some kind of technological thing that they had done wrong or whatever with their system. And Facebook yanked deliver it from their ability to post anything via Facebook's API. Now, you would think that when they just yank someone's ability to post, that means they can't post into the future. And that is true. But what it also meant, apparently, was that every post ever made by that application in the history of Facebook was wiped out. It was completely gone. So every single post, almost every post, with the exception of every now and then I'd change the cover picture or something like that, almost every post that had, that had been made to the free keen Facebook page had disappeared. And it was just gone like that. And if Deliverit hadn't gotten their S together and fixed whatever it was that they needed to fix to regain their posting ability, all those posts would be gone forever. So when it's when it looks like something's there, right? Like something has posted to Facebook. When you think of posting a message on a message board or posting a message in real life on a cork board or something like that, you know, when you die, the messages that you posted on the cork board don't just disappear. In this case, in Facebook's case, as soon as they revoked that access for that one company, poof, every every post on every page, not just Free Keen, everyone who'd ever used this tool to post anything to their Facebook pages had all of their content go away. That's why I, I, I might be one of the only people that, you know, this is a great, wonderful time as far as technology to mm -hmm. where, you know, I've got every piece of information in the world at the tip of my fingers. Yep. But I'm convinced that we are living in the Dark Ages. The new Dark Ages. The right. new Dark Ages. Because of what you just said, things just disappear. What happens when computer hard drives stop working properly? Everything that's on that hard drive, poof, gone. You got to have backups. It's gone forever. If you've got a backup, that's only going to last for so long because, you know, memory doesn't last forever. You got to have more than one backup. Right. So, but what about an EMP? Electronic I, I'm not even pulse. talking about that. Just like the shelf life of hard mm. drives is only a certain number of years. Well, that's true. Before it just like vanishes. But people migrate data, right? Like, you know, you don't keep the same old hard drive for 20 years. You're going to get a new hard drive after probably another five years because they will fail. That much is true. We'll come back with more. We'll talk about the new Dark Ages if you want. It's Free Talk Live. Now, a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley, U.S. Tax Shield. We can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. 
If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. We've got today now's medical expert, Dr. Kareem Mazari, here to give us some tips on how to convince a stubborn little guy to take off his Spider-Man costume and start wearing normal clothes so people don't think he's a weirdo. And also joining us is my son, Spencer, still dressed as Spider-Man. Spencer? Hi, Mom. I find the best thing to do is to try and have a dialogue with your child. Now, Spencer, why won't you take your costume off? Because then people will know my true identity. You're not even wearing the mask! People already know who you are! Well, bargaining can work. Explain bargaining? to your child... Bargaining? Is it not enough that I say take off the <laughs> Spider-Man costume? Now I've got to bargain with my own child? Jesus Christ! You know, Oof. Spencer, sit down. Oof. Sit ah! down! Do you want to be put in the silence trunk again? You don't like the silence trunk, do you? Um, okay. I'm Spider-Man! I'm Spider-Man! Spencer! Spencer, sit down right now! Sit down, you little face, or I will break the rest of your toys on purpose! Do you understand me? This is the Onion News Network. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us here at 855-450 Free. Is Daryl right that we are in the new dark ages, that we're one power failure away or EMP or hard drive failure away from having things disappear, all the photos and text and things that people have come up with in the last decade or two? Uh, I think that's what you were getting at there, Daryl. We can talk further about it. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And uh, still to come here tonight, the latest on Greece. Things are not getting better over there, as you might have already guessed. We'll tell you more about what that looks like. But also, ExpressCoin is where you want to go if you want to get Bitcoin and Litecoin and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money services business. Unfortunately, if you're in Greece, you can't use ExpressCoin. But if you're in the U.S. or Canada, you absolutely can. They are, again, licensed uh, that you can uh, get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. Just get started at ExpressCoin.com. Do it from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL will get you up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. That's ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL. Don't forget that. Great way to get started with some Bitcoin with no fee. Or get some more Bitcoin. That's a great place to do it. ExpressCoin.com. As we go to your calls and thoughts, Joe is in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Hello, Joe. Hello. Uh, one large power outage, and we will have a large problem with the technology of what we have today. But what I called about was I am getting more concerned about chips being in products. How about what being in products? Around? Chips, microchips. You have a commercial about a microchip wallet. Yeah, that's right. The uh, the, the uh, well, it's a, it'll actually protect your cards, your uh, like your credit cards and debit cards, which right. may have RFID chips in them. It will protect you from having people steal the information on those chips. Yeah, I, I saw a video wallet. where it was like some NBC news crew. They went around to some shopping mall and mm -hmm. some guy had an RFID reader. A scanner, yeah. And he was scanning people's credit cards and then they would go up to the person and Is like, your give card them number? some yeah. of the <laughs> info and they were freaked out. They were like, how'd you get that? And they are like, you've got one of those new MasterCards, don't you? Oh, wow, yeah. ID Stronghold can help folks out with that. ID Stronghold, I believe, .com and tell them Ian Freeman sent you. Uh, but what about it, Joe? Go ahead. Uh, Target 
placed an ad that they're doing in uh, some stores where some of the items they sell are going to have tracking chips in them also. How serious is this going to be in the future? Well, first of all, these aren't tracking chips. Uh, what you're talking about is RFID chips, and this is not a new technology at this point. It's probably a solid decade old as far as being used in retail, the, the retail space. So I'll give you an example of why this is helpful and why you really shouldn't be con too concerned about it. Uh, so in the stock room at any retail store, there's a lot of product that comes in every single day. And having worked right. at uh, big, the Big K when I was a teenager, I, I know a thing or two about stock rooms and how that stuff goes. So when you get a pallet of stuff in there, there's inventory. You know, you have some idea of some kind of a list of what's on that pallet. And these RFID chips that they can put inside product boxes can help the people who are running the, you know, moving product around, can help them know what is where by simply scanning the pallet with one of these devices rather than having to do a count or figure out what's there. They can just and it scan doesn't, it. It doesn't even have to be a chip. I've seen these things as stickers that well, you right. can put on, you know, a carton of merchandise or whatever. Chip sticker. It's and an then antenna with the If it's data. not, you know, deactivated when it goes through the thing at the store, it goes off. Right. Let's them know somebody took some merchandise out of the store that was not. Oh, it will not follow with the p person that's buying the product. It could. Okay, that's where I was. I was thinking it was following us as we buy the product. It could. It depends. Unilever did a promotion down in Brazil a couple of years ago mm -hmm. where they did something like this, where they put in like random boxes of one of their detergents or mm -hmm. something, put a RFID something. And they were able to somehow track it, and then their prize van no showed way. up at people's homes. Is that Hello, true? Hello, you won Unilever, blah, blah, blah. Is that true? Obviously. Are you sure? Are you 100% sure about that? I read the story from a very reputable source a couple of years ago. I'll try to find the article posted on the Facebook. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not a, I'm not entirely technically aware of exactly how RFID works, but it's my understanding right. it's very, very short range uh, communication. So it's not like they can just flip the satellite on and boop, 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 and know where all their products oh, okay. are, right? Right, but uh, it, it was God, probably was one of these targeted sort of things. Serious. Right. Sorry, Joe. What was that? I was not sure how serious it was, you know, because the media plays on your brain some, and, and so I just was yeah. not sure on that. Hey, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate you bringing Thank it up. You. No, yeah, yeah, no, no problem. When you say it was targeted, what, what do you mean? Does that mean? So it could have been to where they knew what store mm -hmm. they were sending the things, and then they had somebody in the prize van with something right near the exit so that they could track whoever it was. Instead of just like, it's in one of these boxes, it's in one of these 10,000 stores. So what you're saying is the prize van you think waited outside the store for someone to take I, it I out? I said and then that that's a possibility of how they did it. I don't know. I, I, I need to try to find. Yeah, you're going to have to find that one for me because, I you know, maybe, maybe RFID is more powerful than I thought. But, you know, the chips themselves, they're not powered. They're right. just they're they're sort of activated by the RF. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Techies toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. There's no battery on an RFID chip, right? There's nothing right. to. It's not transmitting. But what it can do is it can sort of reflect RFID power that's radiated into it. I believe. Yes. And it re it returns the data that is programmed on the chip when that happens. So when it's hit with the RFID scanner, that sort of energizes it enough to bounce back that data but how far it can bounce that i am pretty skeptical that it can go more than a quarter to a half a mile i mean i just i, I just can't believe that maybe they have some super rfid thing that i don't know about but would tide have used that or wh whoever it was in unilever yeah unilever i'm curious to i know don't know more. i am very curious now to know more about that I, again I, I don't claim total knowledge on the specs of the system there but Generally, the products that have RFID chips in them are being used for inventory purposes, and you probably don't have too much to worry about somebody driving by your house and inventorying your whole house, although I guess in theory that could be done depending on the range of these RFID chips. Let's go to Joe listening in North Carolina to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Joe. You got to turn down the radio. Radio tip, big radio caller tip. When you're on hold, you have to turn down your radio because 
you know, there's the delay broadcast that we have in action here to protect protect our stations from uh, from curse words and things like that. And it's a few seconds long. So by the time Joe hears his name on the radio and actually picks up the phone to talk to us, uh, you know, hey, how you doing? there he is. Hey, Joe. Did you turn, did you turn sorry, down your radio sorry. yet? Because if you didn't turn the radio down, it's going to drive you insane now that you're on the phone with us. Yeah, I, I was turning it down, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Go ahead with your thoughts, Joe. Uh, this is getting back tomorrow or tonight. At twelve will be our uh, July the fourth. But uh, I'm with the homeless people here in in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and and we listen to to your program, all programs, talk talk radio because it passes time and gives a perspective of what's going on. We sort of get mm-hmm. uh, lost back here some. But anyway, the flag to us reminds us of a story we heard where the guy in the Confederate side of the Civil War he he got hit fighting and and he wrote a letter he was paralyzed on his right side and he was right handed so he wrote it left handed to his father and he said uh, uh father i just wanted you to know that i died facing the enemy and that letter is here somewhere in north carolina in the museum but that's what the flag is for that that the real true people the confederates want you want people to know about and they have a right to feel that way and to be proud of their relatives or whoever that were killed or fought in the in the Civil War. And these other, I came personally from a racist county here, next the next county over from where I'm at now. So I, we, we know the difference. And these people use it for their reasons. And, and that just way back 50 years. They'll never get anywhere. It's still fitting the back on the You're the saying ground. you know the difference between somebody flying the rebel flag for a racist purpose and somebody flying yeah. it to support the, the past right. south? But, Thanks but, for the call, Joe. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Unfortunately, the average person looking at it probably doesn't know that. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. A liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius. zog.ninja. Code FTL. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. It's a terrifying thought. You're trapped somewhere without a radio and no access to GCN shows. A doctor's office. The DMV. Your mother-in-law's. Come on, stay for dinner. That's what makes the newly redesigned GCN Live app a true lifesaver. Listen to your favorite GCN hosts and programming on your smartphone, wherever you are. Download yours free on iTunes or Google Play. The new GCN Live app. Don't leave home without it. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. 
See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Daryl and I have been doing a little digging during the break on RFID technology. And Daryl, you actually pulled up some information about the uh, the Unilever contest that you were yes. talking about before. We'll continue uh, with that discussion here in moments. Just how powerful is RFID? How far away from how far away can it be read? Can the data on one of these chips be read? Our toll-free number is 855-453 if you want to join us. We've also got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And if you support Free Talk Live, if you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then please become an amplifier today for just $5 a month. It's five bucks that goes into advertising, marketing, and promoting AMP, Free Talk Live. Getting more Free Talk Live on more radio stations around the globe uh, and around uh, the United States specifically. Also getting on more satellite channels around the globe. And I'm happy to announce, I don't think we've announced this yet on the air. Uh, I mean, we knew it was coming, but the fundraising that we did for the African Satellite Channel was a success. We raised enough money thanks to about 40 or so donors, 40 or 50 donors. There was actually like 40-something cash and another 10 or so Bitcoin. Uh, so thanks to like 56 or so uh, different donations, we were able to fund the first year back on satellite over much of Africa. A good swath of east-west central Africa is now once again covered by the LRN.FM satellite channel. So most of sub-Saharan Africa? Yeah, pretty much the we're not in South Africa, so we don't the signal doesn't cover South Africa and it doesn't cover the northern African uh, Right, that, that would be the Sahara yeah. area. That's why I said most of sub-Saharan. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the case. Um not all the way from the f- furthest west coast, but from one of the west coasts of, of Africa. It's a big signal. You can see it for yourself over at sat.lrn.fm. Got coverage map there and uh, Akko, our uh, contact in Cameroon, reached out to me last night, and it's it was great. You know, it's great knowing Akko, right? Because he can actually test the signal and make sure that it's working correctly. Right. Turns out it wasn't working correctly. They had some kind of uh, Latin music on the LRN.FM channel. Oh no! Yeah, it said LRN, and then Latin was, radio. Yeah, it was Latino music, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but it's bad when we're paying for satellite access. Right. You're you're expecting uh, to hear Free Talk Live, yeah. and you're hearing you know Mambo Number no. Five. So so I emailed the satellite company, and I guess you know, they probably had some wires crossed somewhere, and they fixed it up, and then Akko reported we're good to go. So it is nice. official. It's a done deal. And thank you so much to everybody who ponied up as as little as a dollar and as much as one guy, I think, like $1,800. Oh, nice. Uh, to help get us uh, back on over Africa. It's going to be something we'll do on a yearly basis. We'll do some fundraising for the satellites year after year. But I think it's really useful to be on uh, in those places. These are places where the ideas of liberty are as important, if not more so, than here in the United States. So I'm really excited to be back on it. It's the AMP program that can help make that happen, too. So if you like the fact that we're on over Africa, Central America, North America, we got satellite that covers it, blankets most of those areas completely with uh, LRN.FM and the ideas of liberty 24 hours a day. If you want to see us expand that, again, that can you can help us with that at AMP, A-M-P 
www.freetalklive.com and you get perks like access to the Amp Only call-in lines, the Amp Only uh, podcast, the Amp Only Facebook group as well. So once again, it's amp.freetalklive.com. And again, if you want to learn more about the satellite, you can go to sat.lrn.fm. So uh, RFID, Daryl, you learned an important detail about the Unilever contest. You said it was South America where they— Down in Brazil. Okay. uh, Where they had 50 boxes of soap detergent Mm -hmm. that they actually had GPS trackers, not RFID. So I was incorrect on the Mm -hmm. technology they were using. Uh, So they had 50 boxes, and they had people in the 35 largest areas— that were tracking these, they somehow became activated when removed from the shelf. And they had people that were tracking, and then they would go and knock on people's doors and say, congratulations. Wow. You won because go check your laundry thing, and it's going to have less detergent and a GPS tracker. It's a little creepy. It kind of is creepy. Yeah. Um, But it's good to know that it wasn't RFID, because that was the confusion was how the hell... Would they have been able to know that somebody had an RFID-tagged product in their home from a distance? Because RFID, as I understand it, isn't particularly good at, uh, you know, it's not transmitting necessarily. It's sort of a passive antenna in most cases that can can sort of bounce back RF radiation that's shot at it by one of these RFID scanners. But because I wanted to know more about this, I went ahead and I Googled and was looking for details on, well, just how far, from how far away, from what distance— can you actually successfully read the data on one of these RFID chips? Depends. I, I'm guessing here, and tell me if I'm correct, mm-hmm. it depends on how large the antenna on the chip is yep. and how much wattage is being used by the frequency uh, the whatever. And those are those are two factors, and another factor is... Terrain. Uh, uh, well, there's that, and w- what's in between it. And then another factor is uh, the... Well, let me just read this here. There's a short sure. little paragraph from Try... What is it? Some company that's... I think they're marketing RFID chips to Try Optic. Anyway, question. Uh, from how far away can a typical RFID tag be read? The distance from which a tag can be read is called its read range. Read range depends on a number of factors, including the frequency of the radio waves used for tag reader communication. So there's different, this is what I was going to say, there's different uh, frequency ranges that these things operate in. And it'll explain that here in a moment. The size of the tag antenna, as you guessed correctly, the power output of the reader, and whether the tags have a battery to broadcast a signal or gather energy from the reader and are merely reflecting a weak signal back to the reader, which is how the supermajority of them work. Battery-powered tags, which you'll almost never see, they certainly are not battery-powered in your credit cards or in you know products at the at the store. Right. Uh, but battery-powered tags typically have a read range of 300 feet. And that's pretty far. Uh, these are the kind of tags that are used in toll collection systems. So Easy Pass is using a, a battery-powered tag. And to give people the idea of how far 300 feet is, that's a football field from goal line to goal line. Right, because 100 yards. Yes. Uh, So high-frequency tags, which are used in smart cards, have a read range of three feet or less. So those would be likely the ones that are in your credit cards or debit cards. And then further, there's UHF tags, ultra-high-frequency tags. And those are the kinds that are used on pallets of product and cases of goods in the supply chain. And those have a read range of 20 to 30 feet under ideal conditions. If the tags are attached to products with water or metal, the read range can be significantly less. And I presume also if you're trying to read what's on a, a you know a pallet full of goods and you're standing outside of the store with a, a wall between you, that's right. probably going to significantly reduce uh, the read range. So ideal condition meaning the person standing in the stock room pointing the you know the reader directly at the pallet and having it bounce the information right. back if the tags are uh, if the size of the UHF antenna is reduced that will also dramatically reduce the read range 
Increasing the power output could increase the range, but most governments restrict the output of readers so they don't interfere with other RF devices like cordless phones. So there you have it. Uh, RFID is not some magical spy technology that's going to allow someone with a satellite dish to determine uh, what kind of TV set you have in your home. That's what they want you to think, Ian. Well, I suppose we could go into conspiracy <laughs> land where, you know, science doesn't actually mean anything. But radio waves are, you know, they're ruled by the laws of physics, not uh, by fantasy. And so there's some information for you. For those right. Of you and for, for anybody that could not tell, I was being completely sarcastic. sarcastic uh, tongue firmly implanted in my cheek. So given that the uh, tags used on pallets and cases of goods can be read 20 to 30 feet under ideal conditions. I guess, in theory, if those same tags were in the products, which is not, I, I don't know how large these tags are, right? So I'm not sure about that. Uh, one of the tags that's going to be inside a product is going to be relatively small, whereas a tag inside a shipping box could be larger. Right. So how large the ones are that are inside of these uh, shipping containers or uh, inside of pallets, boxes on pallets, uh, I'm not real sure about that. If they did start putting RFID tags in products, in individual products that are going out the door to a store, it seems highly, highly unlikely that anybody standing outside of someone's home could shoot one of these readers at the the person's home and and figure out all the stuff that's in it. Right. And one thing that, and I, I thought of this when I worked for an airline, I do not understand why airlines are not using RF technology for bag tracking. They're relying on barcodes and someone yep. with a scanner scanning the barcode. And then in most cases, you still have to walk the scanner over to a physical mm. dock, put it on, and press upload. It's probably because, you know, businesses don't like to change if it's been working one way for but a long time. But it doesn't work because people forget to upload the scanners. I got yelled at by three supervisors one time because somebody forgot to upload a scanner, and I put a bag delivery for a bag that was there at the airport. We'll continue in moments. Hour number three is on the way. The latest on Greece coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, my name's Cody, and I want to tell you about Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is the world's first decentralized peer-to-peer -peer protection system. We are developing a smartphone app that revolutionizes how people protect one another. Peacekeeper is a disruptive alternative to the status quo. Peacekeeper is a leap forward in protection services, allowing neighbors to respond far more quickly than police and fire services can. And this is a real community builder, too. Visit peacekeeper.org and join us. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 3rd, 2015. 
Silver is trading at $15.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,170 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $256. Antiwar.com reports while the war against the Islamic State inside Iraq looks likely to continue for the foreseeable future, Iraqi Kurdistan is already looking toward the post-war period and sees secession as a top priority of the post-war era despite Obama administration opposition. U.S. troops on the ground say they have been informed the Kurds intend to secede from Iraq whether the U.S. likes it or not and is planning to take the northern city of Kirkuk, an oil-rich city that is historically Kurdish but has recently had a large Arab population with them. Tensions between the Kurdistan regional government and the Shiite-dominated central government have been growing for years with disputes over oil payments bringing the Kurds close to de facto separation several times in the recent past. The war against the Islamic State has given the Kurdistan regional government an opportunity to expand its territorial possessions along the frontier and to acquire weapons from foreign powers looking to turn the tide against the Islamic State. By the time the war is over, the Kurds are likely to have enough power to be able to successfully break away from Iraq. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a former U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent pled guilty Wednesday to charges that he stole $200,000 in Bitcoin and tried to sell law enforcement secrets while investigating the online drug marketplace, Silk Road. Carl M. Force was the lead undercover agent with direct contact to Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht, who allegedly went by the moniker Dread Pirate Roberts. The Justice Department said Force, who went under the aliases Knob and French Maid during the investigation, offered to sell Ulbricht fake driver's license and law enforcement secrets about the government's Silk Road investigation in exchange for more than $200,000 in Bitcoin. He deposited the currency into his personal accounts. Assistant Attorney General Caldwell said former DEA agent Carl Force crossed the line from enforcing the law to breaking it. Seduced by the perceived anonymity of the virtual currency and the dark web, Force used invented online personas and encrypted messages to fraudulently obtain Bitcoin worth hundreds of thousands of dollars from the government and investigative targets alike. Investigators said Force also admitted to signing a $240,000 contract with 20th Century Fox to assist in a movie about the Silk Road investigation without approval from the DEA. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a freight train carrying flammable and toxic gas derailed in eastern Tennessee, igniting a fire in one car and spreading noxious fumes that forced the evacuation of more than 5,000 people and the hospitalization of at least 25. Homes and businesses were evacuated following the derailment around midnight Wednesday of the CSX train in Blount County, Tennessee, near Maryville. CSX and U.S. regulators are investigating the cause of the derailment. Local officials said the Environmental Protection Agency was monitoring air quality in the area. At least 25 people were admitted to Blunt Memorial Hospital with respiratory issues, while another 27 were held for observation in the emergency room at various times. Firefighters were allowing the blaze to burn itself out on the advice of specialists, as attempts to extinguish it could be hazardous. CSX said at 3.30 p.m. that the tank car continued to burn, making it unsafe to establish any transfer operations. Officials said Maryville residents could be forced from their homes for up to two days, and the Red Cross had set up a shelter in a nearby high school. Residents within a two-mile radius were evacuated initially, according to the Federal Railroad Administration. The zone was reduced to only one and a half miles from the scene of the accident later on Thursday. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
It was on this day in 1982 that the first roller skating while carrying a boombox member of Congress was elected when James Sugar Boots Franklin narrowly won New York's 8th congressional seat. Franklin's victory was a watershed moment at the time, signaling that America's burgeoning population of boombox carrying roller skaters had finally gained mainstream acceptance. We proved Congress isn't just for suits and crew cuts. Say hello to the slickest legislator on 8 wheels, James Sugar Boots Franklin. Franklin was an unlikely pioneer, a street smart skater who admitted to being more concerned with impressing honeys with his silky smooth moves than with politics. Franklin began organizing boombox carrying roller skaters, advocating for basic rights like roller skate accessible ramps in government buildings and protected street lanes where they could lay down cones for some sweet slaloming. Just because we like to roll it out and have a smooth, fluid style that cannot be denied doesn't mean we aren't Americans. <laughs> is the Onion News Network. Welcome back to more Free Talk Live. We've got time for you. Final hour here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Joining you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Daryl. And we'll talk about the Greek situation. It continues to develop, and not in a good way. Uh, we'll do that here as, uh, in a moment. Our toll-free number is 855-453. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype in and join us here. Talk about whatever happens to be on your mind. We've discussed Independence Day, uh, secession, and even RFID uh, here tonight. So those are a few things that have been on the table. But you can bring up anything. That's the point of Free Talk Live. Uh, Skype username again, lrn.fm. If you are not yet on our contact list, you do need to send a contact request. We will approve it as soon as it comes in. And then once you're approved, you're good to go to call us on Skype from that point forward. So... Here is, without further ado, the latest on Greece. This story actually came out a couple days ago, but it's so it's so un unusual. I wanted to, to share it here. Headline from the AFP, Greek pensioners besiege banks to grab cash. And AFP here is not Americans for Prosperity. It's the Greek, or not Greek, the French news agency, oh. AFP. I didn't think it was Americans for Prosperity. I never really knew what AFP stood for. It's a French news gotcha. agency. So, uh, anyway, the as you know, or maybe you don't know, the situation in, in Greece is pretty crazy. The government it's there, bad. Okay. Yeah, the government there has been taking billions of dollars, hundreds of billion, uh, billions of dollars in bailout money from the EU over the last several years, and basically hasn't been able to pay it back. They had a 1.6 or 1.7 billion dollar payment. That they were supposed to make this week on Tuesday. They did not make that payment. They've essentially defaulted on that. Uh, their banks were shut down this week, initially shut down on Monday. Then they extended that holiday to six days, six business days. So they won't be open until at the earliest this coming Tuesday. And it's probably unlikely they're going to be opening in that case anyway, because there's a vote that's supposed to go down this weekend amongst the people of Greece on Sunday, correct, to decide whether or not the people are willing to authorize the government to go ahead and agree to austerity measures that are being demanded by their creditors. In this case, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the 19 uh, Eurozone nations. And essentially, the, the prediction is that the people of Greece are going to vote no, that they are not willing to go through with the austerity measures and essentially default and leave the uh, the eurozone and go back to probably printing their own currency or who knows what uh, they'll do after that. Hyperinflation is what they will do. Well, we'll talk about that. In fact, uh, Chris Cantwell has uh, been following this case very closely, and he's got a good write-up over on his website. But first, the, the, the latest news, and again, this story came out a couple days ago, but it's just crazy. So I wanted to share it here because we haven't talked about this, the Greece situation in a couple days here on Free Talk Live. So from the AFP, in chaotic scenes, thousands of elderly Greeks on Wednesday besieged the nation's crisis-hit banks. The headlines today, by the way, uh, out of Greece or about how the country's about to run out of cash. They've uh, they had a, an ATM restriction that was at 60 euro earlier this week. It's now down to 50 euro. And the claim is that it's down because they're running out of 20 euro bills. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if that's the real reason they've reduced it. I suspect the real reason is something well, else. Well, when you have fractional reserve banking to where you only have 8% right. of the cash that people think there is... You're going to run into these problems. Yeah, you got a huge problem on your hands. In this case, now one of the problems is old people who want to get their pension payments. 
And uh, they are uh, besieging the nation's crisis hit banks, which reopened this week to allow the pensioners to come in to withdraw cash from their state pensions. Let them go to hell, shouted one pensioner after failed talks between Athens and international creditors sparked a week-long banking shutdown. Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras' government ordered the banks to close on Monday for one week and imposed strict capital controls to head off a banking collapse after panicked Greeks emptied the nation's cash machines. Athens has now reopened almost 1,000 bank branches for three days to allow pensioners without bank cards to withdraw 120 euros, approximately 133 U.S. dollars, to last them through the rest of the week. So you can go into the bank as long as you're one of their pension plan people. These, you know, I guess that's the equivalent of Social Security or something like that. Probably. Over there. Under banking restrictions imposed all week, ordinary Greeks can withdraw up to 60 euros a day. That's down to 50 now for each credit or debit card. But many of the elderly population who are allowed more do not have said cards. Pensioners with cards will not be eligible for the 120 euro withdrawal because they can already withdraw significantly more cash per day via ATMs. The move has sparked lengthy queues at banks across Greece and outrage from many retirees who are regarded as among the most vulnerable in society, exposed to a vicious and and lengthy economic turndown. Uh, one former employee of the national electricity company DEI said, I took the money out. I know this is not enough, but that's what I could take, so I took it. She said she was convinced Greece could weather the financial crisis. She says, I lived during the Nazi occupation. I experienced hardship, and I think we will overcome this moment. Well, that's true. I mean, you're going to get through it. There probably won't be too much starvation because likely the market will find a way to uh, to get food in there. But there's a serious problem that the businesses are facing, as we explored earlier this week. One of the capital controls that has been put on the this country is that if you run a business, you cannot send money outside of Greece. So if you are buying product from somebody who's outside of Greece, as, as most, you probably are. As most of them are, because there's a lot of import business in uh, in Greece. There's not a lot of uh, you know, native production or whatever. Right, there's so, fish. Like the, yeah. the only thing that you're going to get locally in Greece is fish. So uh, they are not allowed to pay their vendors, basically, which means business is grinding to a halt. So An- everybody is now going to become pescatarian. Another customer, a retired sailor who asked not to be named, told AFP he had no cash to buy crucial medicine for his sick wife. He said, I worked for 50 years on the sea, and now I'm a beggar for 120 euros. I have no money for medication for my wife, who had an operation and is ill. Retired Greeks traditionally draw their pensions in cash from their local bank. Each month, the money is paid normally, but not this month, said a retired employee of the Bank of Parasius. Pensioners must now get by on the small cash disbursement until next week. And who knows what the hell's going to happen next week. I'll spend less than 20 euros per day, said one man, queuing at a National Bank of Greece branch in Athens. While some were served on a first-come, first-served basis, there was confusion at other branches, which did it in alphabetical order, telling those with surnames beginning with the letters I to Z to come back on a different day. In Greece's second biggest city, Thessaloniki, a group of about 200 pensioners, staged a protest outside of the National Bank of Greece. So they have a picture of literally just a sea of, uh, you know, white-haired uh, old people who are really angry. I wonder how many people drove or walked by and yelled to them, Get, Get a, a job, job you <laughs> bum! Because that seems to be what happens whenever somebody has a protest anywhere yeah, in the yeah. U.S. Yeah country's crisis hit economy has buckled under the weight of around six years of recession and accompanying austerity measures demanded by a series of international bailouts under Spiris and his predecessors. I feel shame for my country, said another pe- pensioner. They are all responsible, both Samaras and Sispiris. Greece's generous state pension system is at the heart of fraught talks between Athens and its creditors. The Nathan, nation, nation's European and International Monetary Fund creditors argue that the public pension system is simply too expensive and unsustainable. Gee, imagine that. A government pension system too expensive and unsustainable. That's how it is here in the United States, and I imagine it's as bad in uh, in Greece, where they don't have the benefit of being able to just print out the money that they need to pay the people that are accepting that. Right, because they join the Eurozone. Although they, there are certain things within the Eurozone, Eurozone to where the country is allowed to print 
certain really? amounts of euro, but it still has to meet like certain levels of whatever. So they can't like, you know, make as much as they want. Right. So, you know, it's not like the Federal Reserve. Re- remember the Doritos commercial that Jay Leno was that the- you can't eat just one. No, no, no. That, that was the will make more. Right. That's, That's right. basically Ben Bernanke <laughs> and Janet Yellen's philosophy yeah. at the Federal Reserve. Like, use all you want. We'll, we'll print more. more. So, wow. right. They, they can't just print as much as they want. But if they leave the Eurozone, then they could make as many. I, I'm not sure what the Greek dollar is called, but, you know, like they could print as many of those as they want. And hyperinflation, yes. which is what you were saying earlier. We'll uh, talk more about it, the possibility of hyperinflation, the likelihood of it here in moments. The vote comes up on Sunday, by the way, where the Greek people will decide to accept or reject the proposed austerity measures by the country's creditors. 855 450 free. And what will happen to the price of Bitcoin? It's Free Talk Live. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Discover how deep your American roots go for free this 4th of July weekend. Go to TryAncestry.com to get free access through July 5th. Visit TryAncestry.com anytime this Wednesday through Sunday, and you'll have free access to our collection of records from the original 13 colonies and with a new visual story experience. Celebrate this 4th of July and take advantage of this free access weekend. Visit TryAncestry.com. That's T-R-Y Ancestry.com. TryAncestry.com. If you're worried about your health and you're tired of the nasty side effects of harsh drugs or antibiotics, then look no further. Supernatural Silver is the answer. Supernatural Silver is a powerful immune system enhancer that can be used every day to help keep you healthy and well with none of those nasty side effects. It's extremely safe for use internally as well as topically. And Supernatural Silver is hundreds of times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. It is perfect for use in the sinuses, eyes, ears, and on any wound or skin issue. Supernatural Silver is also extremely effective when taken orally and can help fight off bacteria, viruses, and mold that may be overwhelming your immune system. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER Number 2015 for 30% off of your entire order and give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance with Supernatural Silver. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidadi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Back now with more Free Talk Live. You can comment on whatever is on your mind. Maybe it's the situation in Greece or something else entirely different. Uh, Independence Day, of course, officially comes up tomorrow, although Daryl pointed out it should be celebrated on July 2nd, we started out talking about Independence Day and secession, ultimately. Always happy to talk about secession, or again, whatever you want to talk about here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Peacekeeper is more than an app. It's a movement, a revolutionary system designed to challenge the status quo. It's a tool that will allow ordinary people to stand up and be heroes. Peacekeeper is the idea of having an app that you can report emergency situations or you can receive reports of emergency situations involving your friends, your family, your neighbors. That way, it can be a decentralized response. Rather than having to call some 911 dispatcher and then she has to call whoever it is that she needs to call and then they've got to get the word out and then get people to where you got to go. With Peacekeeper, you cut out the middleman and you just send out a, a, an alert and then people will see it and hopefully they will respond. Uh, but unfortunately, with the first version of the program, there were some problems, there were some bugs. And the folks who put together Peacekeeper have been spending the last six months learning from the first app what doesn't work, what does work, and how to build on it. They're going to hire a new developer to create a powerful bug-free system and add in some cool new features like so you don't have to rely on people you know they're going to make it so that everybody with Peacekeeper in your area is a potential ally. Very cool. Going to add some GPS features in there, and I'm sure more that I don't even know about. You can go and get uh, signed up to help them with their Indiegogo fundraiser and, of course, get perks over at pk.freetalklive.com. That's just a short link that will take you to the Indiegogo page. PK, like Peacekeeper, pk.freetalklive.com. If you want to see Peacekeeper 2.0 revolutionize what protection means then contribute to their Indiegogo campaign today at pk.freetalklive.com. So we've been talking about Greece, and uh, one of the developments this week, which was kind of a surprise, was the, the banks had this bank holiday that was started Monday, expanded through six days, six business days, so basically Monday through next Monday, so Tuesday would be the soonest they could open back up. But then on Wednesday, they opened up anyway, to only let the pensioners in who do not have bank cards. So if you're you know, elderly, you're collecting the equivalent of whatever Social Security pension they have over there, and you don't have a card with which most people do it, then you could go into the bank branch location and they would cut you 120 euro, and that supposedly would be enough money to get the, uh, the pensioners through the end of the week or through the weekend to where maybe then something different would happen next week. Something's going to happen, but it's not going to likely be anything good. I mean, these guys are defaulting on hundreds of billions of dollars in loans, and essentially if the people in Greece vote no on the election upcoming, they would be voting no to the austerity measures that the creditors are demanding. Because basically the people who are running Greece, who were elected to... Uh, the people who are elected were elected because they don't like austerity measures, basically. Right. Uh, these people are saying they want more bailouts. They're saying they need more money from the Eurozone, which, of course, they're not going to give it to them unless they agree to these austerity measures, which they don't want to agree to. And so now it's going to go to the people of Greece to decide this weekend. And so that's what we're waiting for here. Maybe Greece should just dissolve as a country. Well, who knows what's going to happen next week? Here's Chris Cantwell's opinion. He's been following this really closely and is really interested in this story, so I like his write-up here over at ChristopherCantwell.com. As Americans shake off their Independence Day hangovers, Greeks will head to the polls for a referendum that many predict will result in their exit from the Eurozone. 
The ballot measure recently deemed constitutional by the top court in Greece is on whether to accept the terms of the bailout package offered by the nation's creditors. Without some kind of debt assistance, it's pretty universally understood that the birthplace of Western civilization will be crushed by its debt obligations. The package makes demands for austerity measures in Greece, cuts to government spending, privatization of industry, and other measures none too appetizing to the ruling party or the people who elected them. Syriza, the coalition of the radical left led by Prime Minister Alexis de Spiris, was elected specifically to do away with the austerity measures imposed by the last bailout package that the country had accepted. Greeks took to the streets with Molotov cocktails and rioted in protest of those measures before voting in Syriza, which is made up of open Marxist and Trotskyites. It would seem that the majority of Greek voters are not exactly Austrian economists. Running a country's economy into in debt to the tune of 175% of the GDP and then electing a communist government to straighten it out is not a strategy anyone with a study of history would think a wise plan. All right, so before you continue, I, I just want to complain about the whole like debt to GDP thing because you're, you're comparing, and I know it's not you that's making the comparison, you're reading... But when people compare debt to GDP, those two things are not related. Why? Because GDP does not create debt. Mm -hmm. Government overspending creates debt. I think the suggestion is that the GDP isn't enough to pay off the debt, and it wouldn't even come close. Right, but the GDP is not the amount of tax revenue that's, that's coming in. Which is even smaller than the GDP. Right. That's why I'm saying GDP is not a good comparison. I see what you're saying. So, you so should be, they should be comparing tax revenue coming in. Compared either to tax revenue or the average budget over the last five years or mm -hmm. something like that. There should be some other way because you, you could just as accurately say the height of the head of state to <laughs> debt and it would be – as accurate of a correlation well, because they're not related at all. It's money, though. I mean, height wouldn't be would be a little bit further away from uh, relatedness. But yeah, I see where you're but coming from. You you could have a GDP of twenty bazillion dollars, right? And a and very debt low taxes of one dollar, right? And it's not going to be any more related than in the U.S., where the GDP is some, you know, several billion, and the. Uh, Debt is $17 trillion. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Point noted. So when they go to the polls and are asked to vote on whether or not they should be compelled to live within their means, well, let's just say, I don't see the point of this referendum. The answer will be an emphatic no. Just the point of the referendum is that it gives the prime minister a little bit of separation between... From making a decision? Right. He already wants to make the decision a certain way. Right. But now it gives him a little bit more leverage, if you will. I'm just doing what the people want. Yeah, right? the the people wanted this. Like, it, I I would love to have seen this happen, but I did not make the this, this decision mm -hmm. on my own. It was them. Don't kill me. I'm the messenger. Oh, well, apparently he's also been giving them the message to vote no as well. Uh, that's what Cantwell says. That Spiris. Oh, he he is. Yeah. He's totally in support of this. Right. But it allows him just a little bit of wiggle room. I'm not saying it's necessarily going to work, but it does give just a little bit of wiggle room to where he could tell the creditors, hey, you know, it, it's what the people wanted. And that'll mean Greece defaults on its debt obligations, as it has already done with a missed payment to the International Monetary Fund. That was the one I talked about earlier this week, yes. the $1.6 billion. It's also the first time in the history of the institution that a nation has failed to pay the IMF. That's interesting. I didn't know that. It also most likely means an exit from the Eurozone and a departure from the Euro as the nation's official currency, which isn't necessarily a bad thing on its own, but you don't have people who understand economics who are going to be taking the reins once that happens. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. More about Greece on the way. It's Free Talk Live. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. 
Go to ourflags.com. That's R, like Rebel, R, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your Rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting goberkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you tonight. It's Ian. And Daryl. Daryl, you've got a website or two or three or four. I've got several. Should we be promoting DarylWPerry.com now? Because normally we'll, we'll promote FPP.cc, which is where uh, you know people can go to get books. And there's also FPPRadio.com, which is a, a radio shows that you put together. You do like three different shows every single week. Uh, you've got a lot going on. Right. What's the most important website right now in, in your bevy of sites? I don't know if one is any more important than the other. Does They're the, important in different ways. Does DarylWPerry.com link to your radio programs? You know, that's a very good question. I don't know. If not, it probably should, don't you think? Yes. It would be a good way for people who are trying to learn more about you. It probably does in the bio mm-hmm. somewhere, but I don't know if there's a prominent link. 
maybe yeah like maybe make it into i mean obviously it's a campaign website primarily but maybe under like an about me or something like that yeah which would have the bio right or maybe a menu or whatever. Like Derek J, of course, has all of his media all in that one place. So that might be a good good place to kind of collect things. Anyway, DarylWPerry.com. That's your campaign website. Yes. FPP.cc. You publish books and news and a newspaper and a variety of other cool stuff there. Yes. News and, so go and check out more of Daryl at FPP.cc or DarylWPerry.com. And... Purse. I'm so excited. Purse is on board with Free Talk Live, and we actually had one of our listeners, uh, supporter, the guy who actually put together the AMP shirts, these, these t-shirts. Or the oh, t-shirts, I love those shirts. I've not had a sleeves. chance to wear it yet. They're really cool. The, I, they're not t-shirts. I shouldn't say that. T-shirts have the short sleeves. These are long sleeve, like, runners kind of, uh, uh, what do they call it, professional fabric or whatever. Right. Really fancy kind of fabric. Anyway, Michael put together... Uh, those shirts for our amplifiers, and he posted on the AMP group recently that he got 20% off of some fancy thing that he was buying on Amazon was super uh, excited about it because when you pay with Bitcoin through purse.freetalklive.com, you can really get 20 25% off, maybe even more. You can get less if you want. You can get 20 to 25% off, no problem at all, on any item on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. You just have to spend Bitcoin. So this actually gives you a reason to spend Bitcoin because one of the the objections, and it's a good objection to Bitcoin, is where do I use it? Well, there's plenty of places you can use Bitcoin, but there's not an incentive to use it beyond the fact that you love Bitcoin and you want to use it, right? Like there's no, at most places that accept Bitcoin, it's the same price in Bitcoin as it is US dollar, right? So given the choice, if I've got X Bitcoin and I've got Y amount of dollars, I want to spend the dollars. Right, because Gresham's law. Right, right. Because I'm hoping the Bitcoin is going to be worth more over time. And I know the dollars are not going to be worth more over time. So to get 20% off, 25% off, maybe even more on items on Amazon for paying by paying with Bitcoin, that is the incentive necessary and to you're, encourage Bitcoin spending. You're guaranteed at least, what, 5% off if That's you do purse, their instant yeah, buy? Purse instant, you get 5% off, no problem. If you're willing to wait for a little bit, you can easily get 20 to 25% right. off. I don't, get, I don't buy things on purse that are less than 20% off, period. Because it only took, like, the last thing I got, the new router for the studio here... Uh, a two hundred and fifty dollar router. I think I paid like two hundred for it or something like that. And so you waited what an extra twelve waited, hours? No, I waited ninety minutes. That that's, order was that's fairly quick. Yeah, I selected twenty percent off, and it was filled within ninety minutes. It's incredible, and it works. This isn't some sort of scam or questionable deal. These guys are on the up and up. Yeah, I've used it several times. I actually was counting up how many times I'd used it because you can track all your old purchases and they actually give you a running total of how much you've saved off of the regular Amazon price. Because you know the Amazon price is darn good anyway. Right. So to save 20 to 25% or more off of the regular Amazon prices, as Mark put it in his recent, uh, we're going to be running some purse ads. I love how he put it. This is like getting a raise almost. I mean, if you think about it, to save that kind of money on the stuff you buy in life. It's tremendous. And a lot of times you get the free shipping because the person that's buying the thing has the Prime account, so that's they're right. getting the free shipping anyway. So go to purse.freetalklive.com. One of the important questions is, do I have to keep going to purse.freetalklive.com? The answer is no. You only need to go there now to sign up. You sign up through purse.freetalklive.com, and then you can just go through their normal URL from that point forward. So it's super easy, and it works really, really well. And if you sign up through purse.freetalklive.com, Free Talk Live gets a very small percentage uh, on every purchase you make from that point forward. So it's super cool. I use it all the time, purse.freetalklive.com. Now, we were uh, sharing from Christopher Cantwell's blog about Greece and talking about how uh, things are going to come to a head this weekend on Sunday with a vote that will likely be no to the further austerity measures that the country's creditors are demanding that they go through in order to get even further uh, debt extensions and increases. So as Cantwell points out, uh, as some economists point out, defaulting on the debt and exiting the euro could be beneficial to the country. Greece entered the eurozone with promises that it would benefit their economy greatly, but GDP growth was cut roughly in half since joining. Even the International Monetary Fund has acknowledged that the country's debt burden is unsustainable and borrowing more money to pay one's debts, while not unheard of, is rarely a sound strategy for economic prosperity. 
especially when your economic plans include increased government spending and strangling economic freedom. So, default and an exit from the euro, while troublesome, may well be the least of all evils. However, this leaves Greece without a national currency. Now, that's not a problem in and of itself. People could return to market-based money in the form of cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin, or precious metals. And by the way, Bitcoin is taking off in Greece right now. The amount of people buying Bitcoin in, uh, in, the Gre in Greece, like from IP addresses in Greece, has increased dramatically over the last few weeks. Uh, so precious metals are another option, or any other number of units of account. This is terribly unlikely to happen, however, because the Greeks elected a communist government. To me, it seems all too obvious they will reestablish their own central bank and fiat currency, which prior to going on the euro was known as the drachma. That was the question you were asking yes. earlier. Greek finance minister Yanis ya Ugh. Varoufakis said on Australian radio this week that, a, uh, that Greece couldn't reinstate the drachma even if it wanted to because they smashed the printing presses upon joining the euro to, quote, impress upon the world that joining the euro was not a temporary phenomenon. However, as the UK's independent reports, Alex Juv... Juv... Uh, Alex Jersh somebody... Jershevsky, the founder of Recovery Partners Limited, worked to restructure New Zealand's debt in the 90s and during the Iceland crisis more recently. He said that once the Greek central bank had obtained reserves of drachma, either by importing or printing, the process of switching back would be swift. He said in an interview they'd have all the bills printed up, they'd be waiting in a bunch of dump trucks. After a bank holiday for a few days to make the switch, the banks would open again for business. It would happen, boom, like that, he said. How shocking, says Cantwell. Leftists destroying capital goods and a com communist finance minister deceiving the public. Who could have seen that coming? Again, this too might well be the least of all evils, though. Replacing euros with drachmas in the bank accounts of the Greek people would certainly see less civil unrest than 11 million people, many of whom are dead broke already, trying to get acquainted with Bitcoin and precious metals overnight. I'm no fan of fiat currency, but let's face it, everybody with the slightest bit of comfort in their life uses them. But again, Greece elected a communist government, which doesn't appear to see the problem with spending more than one earns, or centrally planning the economic activities of millions of people with diverse interests. Since default will essentially cut the nation off from credit markets, this means the only way to make up that shortfall is by printing more money. If the government attempts to cut spending, then the people will riot in the streets. So the printing presses are likely to run day and night until the streets are paved with drachmas and prices skyrocket and the money returns to its intrinsic value of zero, at which point the Molotov cocktails are likely to begin flying once more. I have a hard time believing that people in the know don't see this coming. Central banks and international finance institutions don't often purport to favor free markets. They like it when countries run debts and deficits because they're in the business of lending money and collecting interest. However, once they realize the economic manipulations that cause the debts get to the point where the debt cannot be paid, they suddenly advise economic liberation. The reason for this is obvious. They know it brings the economic growth necessary to pay the debts. We'll share a little bit more here in moments. Your calls and thoughts are also welcome on Greece or whatever's on your mind. Plus, that Supreme Court case we teased at the very beginning of the show. We'll uh, touch on that here in moments. On Free Talk Live, 855-450 free is our number. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. The liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius, zog.ninja, code FTL. Hey guys, I'm Tim Baker. I'm Daniel Brown. And I'm Sean Stewart. And we are the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Us three chumps love to talk too much, and for some reason other people seem to enjoy it. That's why we started You, Me, and BTC, which, which is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Find our show at youmeandbtc.com every Thursday. We also post Bitcoin-related reviews, opinion articles, and much more. Subscribe, like, and follow at youmeandbtc.com. 
Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. You can join us here on Free Talk Live in the remaining moments, which are right now. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. And Daryl. And don't forget to join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live. One of the ways to do it is to become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. You get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only podcast, the amp-only Facebook group, which is super cool. There's always something happening in that amp-only Facebook group. So uh, drop on in and uh, go to amp.freetalklive.com. So back to Chris Cantwell, just a little bit more here from his piece where he's talking about the, what's happening over in Greece, about how you know what's inevitable at this point is basically hyperinflation. Uh, because as he points out, the people in Greece elected the radical leftists who are in charge of the country, who are not interested in the austerity measures that are being proposed by the country's creditors. The country owes billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars to the 19 countries of the Eurozone, plus the International Monetary Fund. Apparently, no one's ever defaulted on an IMF uh, payment before. 
So, Which doesn't really seem that surprising because the IMF has only been around for about 70 years. Is that right? Okay. So uh, anyway, they, they are uh, going to be taking a vote on Sunday. And the people will likely do what they did when they elected these folks and back the idea of not agreeing to austerity measures, which will mean they will be gone from they'll be gone from the eurozone. They will no longer be using the euro, and they will then have no money in their country, no no official currency. Well, uh, to to say that people would no longer be using the euro is a little disingenuous. They could still use it, but officially. It would not be the official right. uh, currency. They would not be able to pay their extortion fees to the Greek government with euro. I wonder if the government would allow the banks to do, do business with the euro. Uh, probably not, but yeah. like any euro that are in circulation that people have, they would still trade amongst themselves. Right, right. That's, that's true. And that's, you know, a big question is, well, what will happen when they default and, and they leave the euro officially? Will the country stay without money? And Campbell predicts that they will go ahead and bring back the drachma or some other new variant on that that they will print uh, from their own printing presses. But the claim is they destroyed their printing presses when they joined the euro as some sort of a, you know, statement that they were behind the euro. See how serious we are? We're trashing our own printing presses. But I imagine they'll find the money to buy some new printing presses. Right, and- because, you know, smashing things creates wealth. So uh, they, they've got money to I, – I guarantee they will have money to buy new printing presses. They will probably do something very similar to Venezuela, where, remember, we were talking not too long ago about the Venezuela uh, new currency, the strong bolivar right. <laughs> that replaced the regular bolivar. So they'll probably come out, you know, like the strong, the strong drachma. drachma. <laughs> I bet you're right about that. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's up in the air, and we're going to know a lot more come Sunday night. But uh, a little bit more here from Chris Campbell. He says, and hence we see the myth of the radical left. For sure, if one defines radical as extreme, there are plenty of extreme leftists out there. I far prefer, however, a different and widely accepted definition of radical, and that is of or going to the root or origin, fundamental, or taking things to their ultimate logical conclusion. There is no ultimate logical conclusion of leftist ideology because it is not logical and does not seek conclusions. When one rejects reason and embraces violence as the path to prosperity, the only logical conclusion is hysterical violence, suffering, and death. So Sounds that. about right. Uh, one thing that I, I I hate when people use the term like left and right. Yeah, I agree with because that. Because yeah. there's not really any real meaning like you, you could go back to the historical meaning of, you know, it's where the people in French Parliament sat. Hmm. And what was considered the left at the time would be the libertarians of the day. Right. The people on the right were the monarchists of the day. But I don't think anybody would consider Republicans that they label right wingers to be monarchists. Like <laughs> they're, they're two different versions of people that love the state. Yeah, that's true. They just love the state in different ways. Yep, and there's one thing's for sure that in Greece, come Monday morning, whatever the vote is, the people who love the state are going to be in charge. Yes. So you can damn well bet that the decisions that are going to be made are not going to be in the best interests of the people of Greece because they're going to be in the interest of the people who are the politicians in Greece. Right, and yeah. even if they vote, like, no matter how they vote, it's not going to be in the interest of the people. Yeah. Well, the people will be voting, but they don't know what the heck they're doing. So, Right, you know, but like neither one of the choices are good for them. Yeah, that's true. If they vote yes. Do, do you want me to punch you in the face or shoot you in the foot? Neither one of those are going to turn out very well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably best if they vote no because it will get them out of the Eurozone. Right. And at the very least, then they're a little bit more in charge of their own destiny. Now, what they'll do with that level of extra freedom is likely not going to be what you and I would necessarily do in that circumstance. But I think it would be best for them to not accept the austerity measures because then they're going to accept these austerity measures and in return for probably getting another bailout. Right. Which just puts them even further behind the ball, kicks the can right, down then, the road. Right, but then they could do what GM did and use the bailout funds to pay off the loan. Uh, They've got three 300-something billion dollars in previous loans. I don't think... Whatever the new bailout is going to be is going to pay that off. 
Well, they could at least meet whatever their most recent <laughs> payment that they missed. <laughs> but that that's what General Motors yeah. did when they got the bailout and then they got loans. They used the bailout money to pay off the loan yeah, okay. and then say, see, look how well off we are financially. We are mm. debt free. But they used bailout, like they used free money to pay off the lent money. So we will see. It's interesting to watch as it all uh, goes down and instructive as well. So the other thing you should be paying attention to during all this is the price of Bitcoin. It's been it's sort of leveled out over the last few days. It's even, been between 250 and 260. Yeah, and it's sort of floating around 255 today, and that's up a few, uh, like up about $30 worth almost from the last several weeks. It started going up about two weeks ago, I think. So is it that the you know people are waiting in Greece? Or are they still buying uh, Bitcoin? I, I would like to see Bitcoin go up further faster, but you never know what's going to happen. But in if this it goes up world. too fast, then that's going to it'll look like down. a bubble. Yeah, it'll come down probably. You, you want it to like slow, right. gradually rise. So it's fun to watch, and at least if you're on the outside of Greece. If you're inside Greece, you probably want to get out. I would imagine. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. The Supreme Court story that I teased at the very beginning of the show that you pointed out was actually old news. It was one of those things where it came across my Facebook just like it did yours, and I, oh, let's see what that is, and I didn't even look at the date on it. But here's what it's about. The Supreme Court ruled, and this was in 2014, about Walter Fernandez. He flatly told Los Angeles police they could not search his home without a warrant, saying, you don't have any right to come in here. I know my rights. Well, they ruled Tuesday that Fernandez's right to keep police out ended when he left the premises, even though that was only because police had arrested him and taken him to the station. An hour later, police returned without a warrant, but persuaded the woman Fernandez lived with, Roxanne Rojas, to let them look around. They found evidence that led to a host of charges that cost Fernandez 14 years in prison. The court ruled 6-3 to three that when occupants of a dwelling disagree on whether they will admit police without a warrant, the objecting occupant must be physically present. That doesn't change if police have removed the objector, said the court. Right, and what I think that this sort of opens the door to is police making up charges mm -hmm. to remove someone that objects to a search. Absolutely. And one of the... You know, most used catch-all charges, disorderly conduct. Sure. Doesn't matter if you're standing there invoking your rights, disorderly conduct. And it doesn't matter. Resisting arrest. Right. And it doesn't matter if the charge gets dropped later. So right. even if they know it's a BS charge, they know they can get you out of the way. Well, on the one hand, it does matter if the charge gets dropped later. Depending on what it is that they ultimately find and if they use that against you in a future charge it could matter as to like the uh validity of the search if you will mm -hmm. and that's one of the things in the silk road case that ross elbrick's attorney tried objecting to was the validity of the searches right and they said, well, he has to claim that it's his before he can object to the validity of how it was found. So basically, plead guilty, and then we'll let you object to the search, but it doesn't matter because then you already pled guilty. This court case really underscores how important it is that everyone in a household be instructed on how to handle the police. Yes. If everyone knows to say no to police search, then you're okay. Right. Uh, you don't want to have somebody living in your house who's going to tell yes to the police. To doesn't matter if they live in your house, if they're at even, your yeah, house. Even if they're even there. That's a good point. There's more on the way here uh, tomorrow. We'll see you then. Freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, it's a process of elimination, and you're trying not to be eliminated. So here's a tip for making the cut, and this might seem subtle, but to the person interviewing you, it's not. There is a world of difference between applicants who convey... I need a job, and those who simply ooze, I want to work, especially in these lean times when many you're competing with will seem desperate in I'll take anything mode. If you convey specific interest in this job at this company, you will be conspicuous. Thus, the value of going to school on the company you're applying to before the interview. With money and attention so tight now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for 
for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Seditious Sirens is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,170 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $256. Antiwar.com reports, while the war against the Islamic State inside Iraq looks likely to continue for the foreseeable future, Iraqi Kurdistan is already looking toward the post-war period and sees secession as a top priority of the post-war era, despite Obama administration opposition. U.S. troops on the ground say they have been informed the Kurds intend to secede from Iraq, whether the U.S. likes it or not, and is planning to take the northern city of Kirkuk, an oil-rich city that is historically Kurdish, but has recently had a large Arab population with them. Tensions between the Kurdistan regional government and the Shiite-dominated central government have been growing for years, with disputes over oil payments bringing the Kurds close to de facto separation several times in the recent past. The war against the Islamic State has given the Kurdistan regional government an opportunity to expand its territorial possessions along the frontier and to acquire weapons from foreign powers looking to turn the tide against the Islamic State. By the time the war is over, the Kurds are likely to have enough power to be able to successfully break away from Iraq. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a former U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent pled guilty Wednesday to charges that he stole $200,000 in Bitcoin and tried to sell law enforcement secrets while investigating the online drug marketplace Silk Road. Carl M. Force was the lead undercover agent with direct contact to Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht, who allegedly went by the moniker Dread Pirate Roberts. The Justice Department said Force, who went under the aliases Knob and French Maid during the investigation, offered to sell Ulbricht fake driver's license and law enforcement secrets about the government's Silk Road investigation in exchange for more than $200,000 in Bitcoin 